everyone welcome to the clad possible youtube channel today we will be revising the month of september i would like to point this out that there are certain topics which have already been done from in our 9 to 10:30 sessions uh, the, those topics will not be repeated right these are topics that have not yet been done in the 9 to 10:30 sessions so let's start off with the very first one so the construction of the world's highest combat airfield it has started it has been inaugurated the foundation stone has been laid down by mr rajnath singh our defense minister it is going to be constructed it will be under the vigilance of bro which is and the director general of the same is lieutenant general raghu shrinivasan the location is nayoma in ladakh which is home to an advanced landing ground now it's going to become the world's highest combat airfield the advanced landing ground was established in the year 1962 and the elevation is 4180 meters something related to that if we are asked which is the world's highest motorable road so it goes through the umling la or the umling pass in ladakh it's a 52 km road that links chisumle to demchok and which is right alongside the line of actual control the world's highest railway bridge uh, expected to be open in 2024 is the chenab bridge in the riasi district of the ut of jammu and kashmir and the highest battlefield in the world is the siachen glacier let's go ahead the next one is with respect to the free movement regime so we've been reading about manipur and we've been reading about a lot of things related to that uh, this is another little chota sa concept which is also related to manipur so now what has happened is the indo myanmar border firstly is 1643 kilometers and the bordering states are arunachal pradesh nagaland manipur mizoram right so aruna mami that is how we can learn it now and these four uh, states also come under the inner line permit along with lakshadweep that's a different deal altogether so you see in the year 1926 the british had uh, demarcated this border but they never really bothered asking the people about it so hence in 2018 um, this regime came into being wherein uh, it was supposed to be put into effect in 2017 but it was deferred due to the rohingya refugee crisis because a lot of them were coming into our country so now what they say is uh, if this is the border right so on either side 16 kilometers on either side there's going to be free movement and this free movement is allowed to the hill tribe and they can move without a visa they have a one year validity of movement from one country to another and every time they go let's say from india to myanmar or from myanmar to india they can stay for at least two weeks per visit right and so since the military coup that happened in myanmar in 2021 uh there has been a lot of persecution against the kuki chin people so if you related to the manipur crisis that the maithis are basically saying that the kuki population is increasing day by day because of many factors and one of the factors is the free movement regime so n biren singh who is the chief minister of manipur has basically uh, requested the union government to stop the free movement regime apart from that there is allegedly a lot of drug trafficking also that happens so uh, just keeping that in mind you know there are these three countries which when we put it on the map or we plot these countries on the map it sort of becomes a triangle so the golden triangle the three countries uh, associated with that is myanmar thailand and laos and if we talk about afghanistan pakistan iran wherein also a lot of you know drug trafficking takes place if we look at these countries in the map it forms a crescent so it's called the golden crescent and sandwiched between the two is our pyara bharat right so let's go on the next one is the government of assam they are planning to they have made a panel to draft an anti polygamy law right so uh, basically what had happened was earlier on they had uh set up this justice fukan panle uh panle nahi ye panel hai fukan panel right so um basically to see whether the state legislature can um, enact a law which is an anti polygamy law or not and they basically basically said that this particular panel they it had scrutinized the provisions of muslim personal laws along with article 25 of the constitution 
in relation to the UCC, which is Article 44, Uniform Civil Code. And they basically said that, yes, the state legislature can pass such a law and they can forbid polygamy in that in their particular state. So because of the fact that this panel has said OK to it, now a new panel has been made by the chief minister, Himant Biswa Sarma. And it uh, has a three member. Uh, it's a three member panel. Uh, which comprises of their advocate general. So you see the attorney general at the union level. Corresponding to that at the state level, there is something known as an advocate general who is the first law officer of the state. So Devajit Saikya, right, Kuntal Sharma Pathak and the director general of police, Gyanendra Pratap Singh. These are the three people who are a part of this panel who are going to draft this particular law. That's it about this. Let's go ahead. The next one is Mission Intensified Indra Dhanush 5.0. Right. So firstly, we'll understand there was um, so Mission Indra Dhanush. It was launched in the year 2014. The intensified version was launched in 2018. The objective was basically to cover all children under the age of two years and pregnant women for immunization those who were not covered under the universal immunization program, right? And so 90% of the UIP in India, 90% uh, coverage was done by 2020 and they wanted to sustain the same. So now what is this intensified mission Indra Dhanush 5.0? Now this year for the very first time, the campaign is being conducted A, across all the districts in the country, that is one, and secondly, it is now including children up to five years of age, because previously this campaign included children up to two years of age, which is what I had written over here, right? So it is basically to enhance the immunization coverage, you know, so we are going to provide vaccines under this particular scheme. And special focus for this year is on measles and rubella vaccination coverage. And they, uh, the government wants to eliminate measles and rubella by 2023. And uh, the UWIN digital platform uh, will also be used on pilot mode to basically keep, keep a check on who is getting their vaccination and who isn't and when is a vaccination due. So all of the states except for Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Odisha and Punjab wherein this exercise will uh, get over by the month of November. The rest of them have already, you know, done, they've concluded the three rounds of immunization by 14th of October 2023. Why these four states were a little late is because of some inevitable circumstances. Right, so we need to know the ministry, we need to know it was launched in 2014, the intensified version in 2018. Earlier it was about children uh, under the age of two years and pregnant women and now it has been extended to children up to the age of five years, right? And uh, yeah, so 2023 measles and rubella, that is also something we can keep in mind. Let's go ahead. The next one is India's first cartography museum in Masuri. <clears throat> cartography is basically about exploring and making maps, right? It uses science, art, and technical skills um, to make maps. So that is basically a museum that has been opened up in the picturesque town of Masuri. It was inaugurated by the Minister of Tourism and Culture of Uttarakhand, Satpal Maharaj. Do you have to learn that? I don't really think so, but well, I've written it nonetheless. But yes, you should definitely know that it was inaugurated on World Tourism Day, which is 27th of September, right? And where is it uh, situated? This is rather interesting, right? So this is situated in an area called Park Estate. And Park Estate used to be, you know, the residence of... Um, Sir George Everest used to be over here. And of course, you do understand that, you know, of course, he was a very famous surveyor and Mount Everest was named after him. And with the assistance of the Asian Development Bank, very recently, the tourism departments also refurbished this area, right, and his house. So um, there was also um, another helipad which was named and it was named after this brilliant mathematician. His name is Radhanath Sigdar. And he, for the first time, calculated the height of uh, Mount Everest. And that is why he is also very famous. So there's George Everest, um, the surveyor, and the mathematician, Radhanath Sikdar. 
and um, yeah so it is the park estate where this carto uh, cartography museum has been inaugurated so this is something that you can keep in mind let's go ahead the next one is with respect to critical minerals so a lot has happened with respect to critical minerals and i've sort of like um, um, put all of the news related to it together so as to be able to complete the topic properly so firstly let's talk about what is a critical mineral a critical mineral is something which is very essential for the economic development of a country it is critical in the sense that a country is does not have enough of it and uh, sort of is dependent on other countries for it and it ends up importing it and since it is critical it is important to keep a supply chain uh, which is functional so as to be able to utilize it right and that is exactly what has happened in india so uh, the very first thing that you have to keep in mind and his name has been again butchered by me this is pralad right so mr pralad joshi is the cabinet minister of um, coal mines as well as parliamentary affairs right and underneath this particular ministry you have something called the geological survey of india so very similar to like the archaeological survey of india but that is to do with culture right the geological survey of india will also conduct its uh, mining and all of that of the minerals right so it was made in 1951 the head is janardan prasad and the headquarter is kolkata so what had happened was i'm going to i know uh, vanadium is what uh, is written on top but i'd like to go step by step so we know now the ministry we know the geological survey of india falls under it right so now what had happened was um, this particular ministry it made a committee under the guidance of uh, or under the chairmanship of dr veena kumari dermal and what was the job of the dr veena kumari dermal committee they basically had to identify the critical minerals in india which is why in the month of june if i am not wrong there was this news that you know we've identified the 30 critical minerals so you can keep this particular person's name in mind do we have to learn the names um, of all the 30 critical minerals well if you're great in chemistry go ahead with it otherwise i'd like to say choose your battle right so 30 critical minerals in that sense now so in the very beginning we heard about lithium but because my slide says vanadium let's first start with that right so vanadium has been found in uh, gujarat not just in gujarat also in um, arunachal pradesh but let's go step by step so it is it is a raw material that can be used in a lot of industrial applications and the sediment samples have been found in the gulf of khambat which opens into the arabian sea of um uh, the of alang in gujarat right so brazil you should learn is the largest exporter of vanadium right and china has the highest vanadium reserve so you can see it over here like we are mostly just dependent 100% on different countries and most of the times that country is china is why we need to do something about the supply chain management the concentration of vanadium has also been found in the depo and tamang area in arunachal pradesh so kindly keep this also in mind all right okay let's go ahead now uh, what had happened was in uh, the year 2019 what the government of india did was that it sort of merged three public sector undertakings and it created one new public sector undertaking so these three psus were national aluminium company hindustan copper and mineral exploration company private limited uh you do not need to learn the stakes and all of that but if you can i mean kuch jayega nahi aap logon ka theek hai to ye teen companies ko saath mein mila ke the government of india created something called kabil kabil ka full form is khanij videsh india limited now what is khanij videsh india limited it basically is a combination of these three psus which is going to ensure ki agar sarkar matlab hamare desh mein kabhi bhi critical minerals ki kami na rahe hamare domestic market ko milti rahe theek hai फिर इसी के साथ साथ इंडिया इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू मेक यू नो इट इट ऑल्सो इस्टेब्लिश द सेंटर ऑफ एक्सलेंस फॉर क्रिटिकल मिनरल्स एंड विच विल पेरियोडिकली आइडेंटिफाई एंड अपडेट दिस लिस्ट सो इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू बी लाइक कि इंडिया के लिए यही थर्टी क्रिटिकल मिनरल्स हमेशा क्रिटिकल रहेंगे और इंडिया के पास कभी भी नहीं रहेंगे और हमेशा इन्हीं की जरूरत पड़ेगी सो वी हैव टू कॉन्स्टेंटली कीप अपडेटिंग दैट इफ नीड बी एंड दैट विल बी डन बाय अ सेंटर ऑफ एक्सलेंस acha the second thing is we also found lithium reserves right but it was said that they were of inferred quality the one that we found in riyasi 
right? Inferred quality means uh, less quality, less quantity, but it was substantial amount nonetheless. <clears throat> So, India mein kaha kaha pe mila hai to Riyasi hai na, Koderma in Jharkhand, which they say is like the largest amount that has been found in India yet. Thik hai? Then, uh, Degana, Nagaur, uh, Rajasthan, Mandya in Karnataka. So, all of these. Lithium triangle ABC kya hai? Argentina, Bolivia and Chile. So, ye teen countries ko again plot karo to dekhte hai to it becomes like a triangle, right? So, lithium triangle is Argentina, Bolivia, Chile. Then highest production. So you see there is, there is, I can have highest reserve, but I might not be mining it, right? So highest production is the one that is actually mining it and utilizing it, producing it. So that is Australia with respect to lithium, right? Um, apart from that, well, which has the highest reserve. So in the first half of the year, you know, the, the newspapers were saying, uh, Chile, and then they start saying Bolivia. So I'm. Uh, we can keep both in mind, right? India has also made an agreement with Argentina, Argentinian firm, right? So, and we've said that we are going to explore and uh, look for lithium, and in fact, we have, right? So we've identified two lithium and one copper mine in Argentina. Okay. फिर इसके अलावा हमने ऑस्ट्रेलिया के साथ जो, जो कि हाईएस्ट प्रोडक्शन करता है वी आल्सो एंटर्ड इनटू अ स्ट्रेटजिक पार्टनरशिप विद देम कि सप्लाई चेन मैनेजमेंट के लिए कि कभी हमें यू नो वी रिक्वायर इट सो वी कैन ऑब्वियसली लाइक कम टू यू और व्हाटएवर देन या सो इंडिया ऑस्ट्रेलिया थिंग इज डन नाउ दिस इज सो इंपॉर्टेंट राइट प्लीज कीप दिस इन माइंड दिस इज दिस सिक्योरिटी पार्टनरशिप राइट of these developed countries and it has one developing country which is a part of it and that is india and we have become a part of this partnership in this particular year why have these developed countries made this partnership because they also don't want to be um, you know uh, dependent on any other country they want to be um, self dependent right self reliant that's a better term to use so they want to be self reliant in the sense and they want to create their own supply chain management and it's brilliant how india has become a part of it so that is something we can keep in mind firstly what is the name of the partnership so this is mineral security partnership right led by the united states theek hai and yahan pe supply chain management for minerals such as cobalt nickel lithium 17 rare uh, earth minerals all of that right and uh, so how many countries are there so in totality 13 plus 1 why do i say 13 plus 1 because this plus 1 is a your is the european union which is not really a country per se right so is tarike se kul mila ke 14 ho gayi inclusive of india theek hai so and when was this particular alliance made it was made in 2022 and when did india become a part of it india became a part of it in 2023 फिर इसके अलावा वी हैव दिस एक्ट कॉल्ड द माइंस एंड मिनरल डेवलपमेंट एंड रेगुलेशन एक्ट ऑफ 1957 एंड वी हैव सॉर्ट ऑफ ट्वीक्ड इट अ लिटिल वी हैव अमेंडेड इट अ लिटिल इन 2023 द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी हैव ट्राइड टू चेंज इज द द काइंड ऑफ रॉयल्टी रेट्स दैट हैव टू बी पेड um while mining these minerals right so the normal royalty rate was like 12% but we've reduced it drastically for lithium and niobium which is 3% and 1% for rare earth elements so this will enable the center to auction lithium niobium and uh, rare earth element blocks for the first time in the country you know nobody would like to pay 12% it's too much so because of the fact that sarkar ko bhi chahiye and hamara bhi fayda ho jaye to usko thoda kam kar diya theek hai so like i said this is 2023 and the bill also puts it's been converted into an act so it also puts six minerals including lithium right um, so the six minerals are right here ye learn kar lo so six minerals are lithium beryllium niobium titanium tantalum and zirconium ye pehle they were reserved only for government entities now they can you know commercial mining can take place so don't learn 30 but please learn these six this is important and a world bank study suggests that the demand for critical minerals such as lithium and cobalt is expected to rise nearly by 500% by 2050 right because of course we are looking into alternative sources of energy so like a very simple example that should also possibly come to your mind are electric vehicles and batteries right so hence this is this is going to be in demand 
and well lo and behold no points for guessing there china has the majority ownership of cobalt mines in the democratic republic of congo where 70% of the world's cobalt is mined so baat itni si hai ki ya fir china mein hai ye minerals ya fir jahan pe hai to china ne unko khareed liya hai loan deke ya jis bhi tarike se theek hai so uh, yeah it also by far has the largest amount of reserves of rare earth elements and like i said if it doesn't have it 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 just buys it right so okay and uh, this is interesting right so there's this best selling book called cobalt red and the author is siddharth kara he describes a modern geopolitical quandary half of the world's reserves of cobalt lie in an area which is already taken by china most of it and we did this yesterday so the nobel laureate you know the one who uh, got the no- oldest to get the nobel prize john banister good enough he passed away now why did he get a nobel is because he was a co-inventor of lithium ion batteries right and he was also by the way instrumental in the invention of ram which is random access memory let's go ahead the next one is first lighthouse festival in goa very simple it's it was inaugurated by uh, sarbanan sonowal who is also taking care of of course taking care of port shipping and waterways but also ayush right this was the maiden edition of bhartiya prakash tham utsav or indian lighthouse festival this was in port aguada in panjim in goa and like i said it 75 iconic lighthouses uh, are going to be revamped and their rich maritime history is going to be told to the world so what had happened was marine aids to navigation act 2021 was passed right and it repealed this yesteryear law called the lighthouse act of 1927 so what is this marine aids to navigation act 2021 do it basically talks about the maintenance of these aids to navigation because in the yesteryear what used to aid us a lamba sa dur hai na lighthouse wo wo bahut help karta tha maritime trade ke time pe too so hence um, the the maintenance the management and the entire concept of heritage lighthouses all of that is was born through this particular act that was passed by the government right so um yeah the rest of it is of course you know a session title the vanguards of our shore lighthouses as testaments of india's past and present this was also held where a famous historian archaeologist don't learn his name just understand what he's saying and do learn the fact that there was a session that was titled in this way and you can't possibly learn the entire thing so kya learn karoge vanguards learn kar lo lighthouse you know just pick out certain keywords lighthouses india's past and present like that okay so this guy spoke about the historical significance of lighthouses um a little bit about the aguada fort it was built by portuguese between 1609 to 1612 right and uh, the ruler of portugal at that time don philip philip right who provided facilities to build the fort and portuguese viceroy uh, rui tavara he supervised the construction of this particular fort जहां पे ये लाइट हाउस फेस्टिवल को इनोग्रेट किया है लेट्स गो अहेड द नेक्स्ट वन इज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एनिमल क्रुअल्टी सो दीज आर टू सेपरेट थिंग्स बट द थीम इज सिमिलर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एनिमल वेलफेयर और एनिमल क्रुअल्टी सो फर्स्टली द दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट हैज बैंड द मैन्युफैक्चर सेल एंड यूज ऑफ ब्लू पैड्स फॉर रोडेंट कंट्रोल बिकॉज दे से यू नो इट्स अ क्रूअल वे ऑफ किलिंग अ रोडेंट देयर आर मेनी अदर वेज ऑफ किलिंग ऑफ किलिंग देम बट यू सी if if they are trapped in the glue they die slowly from starvation and extreme pain so they have sort of said no to that and it follows an advisory by the animal welfare board of india uh theek hai jo inhone 2011 mein boli thi aur phir 2021 mein dobara se boli thi ab animal welfare board kya hai 1962 mein bana tha right under the prevention of cruelty to animals act of 1960 so it's a statutory body it is it was headquartered earlier on in chennai and now it is in ballabgarh in haryana theek hai and the chairman is dr op choudhary uh, he is an indian foreign services officer so the uh, ifs and all you don't have to learn okay so uh, animal welfare board of india versus union of india that's the name of the case that this is another thing this is about the practice of jalikattu 
सो आई डोंट नो वेदर यू बिन फॉलोइंग दिस न्यूज और नॉट बट यू नो बहुत देर पहले सर सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने बोला था जली कटु की प्रैक्टिस नहीं होनी चाहिए बिकॉज इट गोज अगेंस्ट इट्स लाइक क्रूअल टू द एनिमल एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट बट नाउ इट हैज बिन अलाउड राइट सो अ फाइव जज बेंच कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बेंच ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट दिस इज टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री बाय द वे कंप्राइजिंग ऑफ के एम जोजफ अजय रस्तोगी अनिरुद्ध बोस वॉज द चेयर पर्सन वॉज द वन हु ड्राफ्टेड द एंटायर थिंग राइट सो एनी वे ऋषिकेश रॉय एंड सी टी रवि कुमार ऑल यू हैव टू लर्न इज दिस इज अ फाइव जजेस बेंच and they have sort of given validity constitutional validity to the prevention of cruelty of to animals act the state amendment ki baat kya hai ki jaise when the supreme court said that jalikattu is animal cruelty you shouldn't do it so tamil nadu ki sarkar ne bola ye hamare culture ka part hai isliye unhone law banaya aur unhone bola nahi law bana ke unhone likha ki jalikattu is absolutely okay ab baat ye thi ki wo law जायज है कि ना जायज है इज इट जस्टिफाइड इज इट नॉट जस्टिफाइड सो द लॉ एज पर द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज जस्टिफाइड राइट सो दे सेड दैट इट्स लाइक एनिमल स्पोर्ट बाकी आपकी सब्जेक्टिविटी आपको ये सही लगा गलत लगा पर सैडली अभी हमसे कोई पूछ नहीं रहा है तो आप लर्न कर लीजिए इसको ठीक है लेट्स गो अड द नेक्स्ट वन इज वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन इन वेरी सिंपल लैंग्वेज वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन इज वेन द इलेक्शन आर कंडक्टेड एट द यूनियन लेवल एज वेल एज एट द स्टेट लेवल विधानसभा और स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली इट शुड बी डन एट द सेम टाइम दिस इज वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन वी आर नॉट रियली डीलिंग विद लोकल इलेक्शन राइट नाउ मे बी यू नो दे माइट वॉन्ट टू पुट दैट ऑल्सो मेक दैट ऑल्सो अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस कॉन्सेप्ट अब बात इतनी सी है कि इस साल क्यों ये न्यूज में है क्योंकि एक पैनल बना है एंड हेड बने हैं मिस्टर रामनाथ कोविंद हु इज गोइंग टू बेसिकली डिसाइड वेदर वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन इज कंड्यूसिव फॉर इंडियन पॉलिटिक्स और नॉट इट्स नॉट अ वेरी नॉवल कॉन्सेप्ट हमारे देश में सबसे पहली बार जब इलेक्शन हुई थी तो वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन ही हुई थी लेकिन वो हो नहीं पाई कम्प्लीटली क्यों नहीं हो पाई क्योंकि um, केरला जो है वहाँ पे आर्टिकल 356 लग गया अभी क्या होता है इसका मतलब लेट्स फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड इट सो लोकसभा की भी यूजुअली क्या होता है टर्म फाइव इयर्स या फाइव इयर्स से कम भी हो सकता है फाइव इयर्स से ज़्यादा भी हो सकता है राइट कम कब होगा जब प्रधानमंत्री जाके प्रेसिडेंट को बोले कि भाई समय से पहले लोकसभा को डिजोल्व कर दो उसको ख़त्म कर दो ऐसा क्या कभी हुआ है बिल्कुल हुआ है प्राइम मिनिस्टर थी इंदिरा गांधी इलेक्शन होनी थी नाइनटीन में और करवा दी थी 1971 में अंडर द गरीबी हटाओ कैंपेन तो ये हुआ है इन द पास्ट राइट कैन इट बी एक्सटेंडेड एब्सोल्युटली अंडर व्हाट कंडीशंस जब नेशनल इमरजेंसी हो बिकॉज़ बच्चे जब नेशनल इमरजेंसी है किस रीजन की वजह से लगती है नेशनल इमरजेंसी या वॉर या आर्म रिबेलियन या एक्सटर्नल अग्रेशन तो उस टाइम पे लोकसभा की इलेक्शंस करवाना वैसे ही पॉसिबल ही नहीं है ना so it can be extended also and there can be premature dissolution also so concept is this ki um, imagine that you have four people in your family and you want to get them married off um, ek to ho gaya ki char logon ki shaadiyan char alag alag time pe ho ek ho gaya charon ki shaadiyan uh, ek hi time pe karwa di jaye to resources bhi kam lag rahe hain paisa bhi sort of kam hi lag raha hai right barati utne hi hain to wo aa rahe hain aur khana wana ban gaya hai तो थोड़ा ज्यादा बना लो इंस्टेड ऑफ लाइक डूइंग इट लाइक ओवर एंड ओवर अगेन फोर टाइम सो द लॉजिक इज वी वांट टू सेव कॉस्ट वी वांट टू सेव टाइम एंड दोज आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स बट यू सी मोर इंपॉर्टेंट देन दैट इज द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन आई ट्राई टू सॉर्ट ऑफ टेल यू दिस इन वेरी सिंपल लैंग्वेज बिकॉज यू सी कॉन्सेप्टअल क्लैरिटी इज नॉट समथिंग दैट क्लैरिटी इज सीकिंग बट टिल द टाइम यू डोंट गेट इट यू विल नॉट अंडरस्टैंड इट सो इट्स वेरी सिंपल लेट्स कीप इट वेरी शॉर्ट हुआ क्या कि लोकसभा राज्यसभा की इलेक्शंस हो गई है ना साइमल्टेनियस इलेक्शंस ही थी सबसे पहली बार हो गई फिर उसके बाद क्या हुआ ना 1959 में तो अगर मैंने फर्स्ट uh, इलेक्शन किया फाइव इयर्स के लिए किया तो 1957 तक हो गया फिर 1957 के बाद 1962 में होनी थी नेक्स्ट इलेक्शन है ना पर उसी से पहले समय से पहले मुझे लगाना पड़ा स्टेट एमरजेंसी अब बच्चे जब स्टेट इमरजेंसी लगती है किसी भी सरकार में तो यहाँ पे कहाँ पे लगी केरला सरकार ने इफ आई द सेंटर इम्पोजेज स्टेट इमरजेंसी ऑन एनी गवर्नमेंट देन द जॉब ऑफ दैट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ ऑफ द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट विल बी डन बाय द यूनियन गवर्नमेंट 
and why have we put a state emergency because that state government is not able to do its job well so ideally it should pack its bag go back home and then elections will be conducted again right there's an entire procedure of establishing president's rule which is also called state emergency which is art under article 356 the so cycle break ho gaya क्यों ब्रेक हो गया क्योंकि संवैधानिक तरीके से राज्य नहीं चल रहा था और हमारा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन कहता है स्टेट इमरजेंसी तो लगानी पड़ेगी अच्छा फिर क्या हुआ 1967 अब जितनों जितने बच्चों ने पॉलिटिकल साइंस स्कूल में पढ़ा है उसमें उन्होंने एक चीज़ पढ़ी होगी कि 1967 तक तंग आ गई थी स्टेट्स विद वन पर्टिकुलर पार्टी you know in the beginning it was just one party at the center as well as the state which is basically at that time was the indian national congress and despite the fact that you are an amazing political party there will be somebody whom you won't be able to cater to because your priority remains the same right or india mein ek cheez hai wo hai diversity आप सेम तरीके की प्रायोरिटी agar har ek rajya mein lagaoge to problem to aayegi kyunki har ek rajya ki need alag hai सो नाइनटीन सिक्सटी सेवन तक क्या हो गया कि यू you नो know, सरकारों ने बोला भाई हमें नहीं चाहिए ये वाली सरकार यू नो देर लॉट ऑफ रीजनल डिस्पैरिटी ऑल्सो लॉट्स एंड लॉट्स ऑफ स्टेट एमरजेंसी लॉन्ग स्टोरी शॉर्ट वो ब्रेक हो गई साइकिल क्योंकि कभी किसी की इलेक्शन कभी हो रही है किसी की इलेक्शन कभी हो रही है अब दोबारा से करना चाहते हैं दोबारा से सेम कॉन्सेप्ट पैसा बचाना है टाइम बचाना है बहुत बढ़िया बात है लेकिन अब पंगा बताऊँ क्या होगा इशूज पंगा ने इन दिस amendments that will be required so for example if uh, the next one nation one election is going to take place in 2024 uh forget everything else i'll start with a very simple thing you know i go and i vote for elections of lok sabha as well as vidhan sabha um i'm not talking about every voter i can talk about myself or some people that i know of you know when i go and vote in a lok sabha election i will uh, think of the prime ministerial candidate i instead of thinking about the person in that constituency that's how my brain works uh, it can be different for other people so jab maine lok sabha ke elections ke liye vote kiya maine socha is insaan ko mujhe pradhan mantri banana hai isliye is wali party ke liye mujhe vote karna chahiye पर जब मैं विधानसभा की इलेक्शंस के लिए वोट करने जाती हूँ तो मुझे कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट असेंबली सॉरी जो मेरी कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी है उधर कौन बंदा खड़ा हो रहा है वो मेरे लिए ज़्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट है क्योंकि वो उधर बैठ के काम कर रहा है मेरे लिए दैट इज़ हाउ माय ब्रेन वर्क्स बट बच्चे वेन आई हैव टू वोट फॉर लोकसभा एज वेल एज विधानसभा एट द सेम टाइम आई माइट बी वेरी स्मार्ट इनफ टू थिंक अबाउट इट अर्लियर एंड देन वोट अकॉर्डिंगली और आई माइट जस्ट do it as he without thinking agar main bina soche karungi to main bolungi are yaar chalo idhar bhi usi ko vote kar do idhar bhi usi ko vote kar do jisko bhi party x party y party z bol lo agar mere jaise log zyada hain india mein zyada voters isi tarike se kaam karenge to kahin na kahin monopolistic situation ya monopoly ho sakti hai jaise economy mein kharab hoti hai monopoly waise hi polity mein bhi hoti hai so that is the first basic thing you know either we are great as voters then it doesn't matter at all but if we are sort of voting because we want like that black color ka mark on our finger and put it on snapchat and which is what most of the voters want to do right they don't really think before voting at least that's what i believe i might be wrong there but the point is that you know that is one of the things that might happen now secondly ab iske baad kya hai 2029 tak फिर नेक्स्ट इलेक्शंस तब होएंगी, ठीक है अब तुम सोचो कि इसके दौरान लेट्स से देर इज अ स्टेट एक्स वाई जेड वॉट एवर स्टेट इन द ईयर 2025 समथिंग हैपन्स इन दैट स्टेट दैट स्टेट इज नॉट वर्किंग अकॉर्डिंग टू द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन तो आप क्या करोगे आप 356 लगाओगे तभी स्टेट इमरजेंसी का कॉन्सेप्ट है अच्छा आर्टिकल 356 जब आप लगाओगे तो वो मैक्सिमम तीन साल तक हो सकता है वो और भी एक्सटेंड हो सकता है बट यूजुअली वो तीन साल से बियॉन्ड नहीं जाना चाहिए पर अगर मैं तीन साल के अंदर अंदर वो स्टेट इमरजेंसी हटा दूंगी दैट विल मेक इट 2028 मतलब एक साल के लिए मुझे दोबारा से इलेक्शन करवानी पड़ेंगी तो अगर दोबारा इलेक्शन करवा ली उसी स्टेट के लिए तो वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन वैसे ही खत्म हो गया या फिर एक्सटेंड किया वो स्टेट इमरजेंसी को नॉट बिकॉज स्टेट के हालात खराब हैं बट बिकॉज मुझे वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन कराना है 
यू सी अगर ऐसा है तो दैट विल रिक्वायर अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट ऐसे बेटा बहुत चीजें हैं वी आर नॉट गेटिंग इन टू दैट नाउ लेट्स लुक एट फैक्ट्स सो इट वॉज फर्स्ट प्रपोज बाय द इलेक्शन कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया इन 1983 दैट इज समथिंग यू कैन कीप इन माइंड राइट एंड नीति आयोग ऑल्सो रिलीज द पेपर रिगार्डिंग द सेम दो में लॉ कमीशन ने बोला था इसके बारे में uh, 21st law commission justice b s chauhan he also said you know a lot of changes have to be made in the constitution 1999 mein justice b a b p jeevan reddy uh, who was the head of law commission at that time that was the 15th law commission also supported it but said certain changes have to be made in the constitution uh, like i said the cycle was broken in dismissing the kerala government and uh, another thing you have to keep in mind is simultaneous uh, assembly polls as of now lok sabha ki election ke sath arunachal pradesh sikkim andhra pradesh and odisha ki elections hoti hain and uh, 2018 wali baat maine already bol di let's go ahead the next one is special session very simple special sessions now how many sessions are there in the parliament there are three uh, budget monsoon and winter there is no calendar year or calendar months that have been defined anywhere it is not written anywhere in the constitution that all three have to take place but it has been written that the gap between two sessions should not be more than 6 months ek session mein bahut sari unlimited meeting har ek meeting ki do sittings ab hum sirf um, word meaning kar rahe hain calling of a session is called prorog sorry calling of a session is called summoning ending of a session is called prorogation एंड ऑफ द लाइफ ऑफ द हाउस इज डिजोल्यूशन तो राज्यसभा की डिजोल्यूशन हो ही नहीं सकती बिकॉज राज्यसभा इज अ परमानेंट हाउस राइट एंड ऑफ अ सिटिंग इज कॉल्ड अडजर्नमेंट एंड ऑफ अ सिटिंग विदाउट अ डेट ऑफ रिटर्न इज कॉल्ड अडजर्नमेंट साइन डाई जब हमें पता ही नहीं दोबारा से कब मीटिंग होगी कब कब सिटिंग होगी बोला जाता है कि भाई बाद में बताएंगे दैट इज अडजर्नमेंट साइन डाई अगर ये बोला जाए कि अभी मीटिंग खत्म हो गई एंड नेक्स्ट सिटिंग जो है वो इस वाले दिन होगी दैट इज जस्ट मेयर अडजर्नमेंट summoning prorogation dissolution all of this i'm talking about the center right so you can use the same example for state and then uh, correspondingly change that so president karta hai upon the binding advice of the pm and the council of ministers adjournment and adjournment sign die ke bare mein baat kare so this is done by the presiding officers presiding officers being speaker deputy speaker all of that we've done it we've done the concept of speaker very nicely in our 9 to 10:30 sessions refer to the documents that i have sent you ab like i said article 85 hai constitution mein jisne ye nahi bola ki sare ke sare sessions hone chahiye but ye zarur bola hai that the gap between two sessions should not be more than 6 months um the provision has its roots in the government of india act of 1935 according to which us samay pe bolte the ki 12 mahine se zyada time nahi hona chahiye do sessions ke beech mein ab hum 6 mahine bolte hain isko एक अटेम्प्ट था 1955 में एक पर्टिकुलर फिक्स्ड कैलेंडर बनाने का ठीक है बाय लोकसभा बट एंड इट वाज द कैबिनेट लेड बाय जवाहरलाल नेहरू अग्री टू इट बट इट वाज नेवर इंप्लीमेंटेड ओके नाउ टर्म स्पेशल सेशन कहीं पे भी नहीं लिखा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में जो बजट मॉनसून विंटर सेशन नहीं है वो स्पेशल सेशन हो गया ठीक है and uh, although article 352 that talks about national emergency वहां पे स्पेशल सिटिंग जरूर लिखा है जो कि ऐड um, किया गया था बाय द फोर्टी अमेंडमेंट एक्ट इन 1978 अब सबसे पहली ऐसी स्पेशल सिटिंग जो थी क्योंकि विमेन रिजर्वेशन में ये चीज हुई थी राइट सो द वेरी फर्स्ट स्पेशल सिटिंग दैट वाज मेड वाज ऑन द ईव ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस इन 1947 दैट वाज बेसिकली डन टू ट्रांसफर द पावर फ्रॉम द ब्रिटिश टू इंडिया फिर स्पेशल सेशन हुआ था आपका नाइनटीन में इंडो चाइना वॉर के ऊपर ठीक है बिकॉज दे वॉन्टेड टू डिस्कस द चाइनीज अग्रेशन देन अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू टू मार्क ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस नाइनटीन नाइनटी टू में मिड नाइट सेशन वॉज कॉल टू मार्क द फिफ्टी एथ एनिवर्सरी ऑफ क्विट इंडिया मूवमेंट नाइनटीन नाइनटी सेवन में टू कमेमोरेट फिफ्टी ईयर्स ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से इज इट्स नॉट रियली अ वेरी वेरी न्यू थिंग राइट सो स्पेशल सिटिंग ऑल्सो नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सेवन में दे वॉन्टेड टू एक्सटेंड स्टेट एमरजेंसी ऑफ प्रेजिडेंट्स रूल इन तमिलनाडु एंड नागालैंड नाइनटीन नाइन्टी वन अगेन फॉर प्रेजिडेंट्स रूल इन हरियाणा राइट टू थाउजेंड एट फॉर अ ट्रस्ट वोट मनमोहन सिंह की सरकार के टाइम पे इस पर्टिकुलर सरकार ने अपने प्रीवियस टर्म में एक जॉइंट मिड नाइट सेशन किया था टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन में 
they wanted to discuss GST, but you will never say that GST was passed because of a joint sitting ever. I've done this even yesterday because GST was a constitutional amendment. Constitutional amendment can never be passed through a joint sitting. Okay. अब आ जाते हैं हमारे नारी शक्ति वंदन अधिनियम के ऊपर विच इज बेसिकली द विमेन रेजर्वेशन बिल विच हैज बीन कन्वर्टेड इन टू एन एक्ट सो इट इज दंड्रेड एंड सिक्स अमेंडमेंट एक्ट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री द वेरी फर्स्ट थिंग दैट आई लाइक टू टॉक अबाउट इज द टर्म लैपसिंग बिकॉज दिस टर्म लैप्स हैज बीन मैंशन ओवर एंड ओवर अगेन इन ईच एंड एवरी न्यूज पेपर आर्टिकल दैट टॉक्स अबाउट द विमेन रेजर्वेशन बिल सो वॉट इज लैपसिंग ऑफ अ बिल लैप्स का मतलब होता है बड़ी सिंपल सी बात अभी आपने डिजोल्यूशन की बात की थी अभी थोड़ी देर पहले डिजोल्यूशन क्या हो जाता है एंड ऑफ द लाइफ ऑफ द हाउस एंड व्हाट डिड आई से डिजोल्यूशन सिर्फ किस चीज का हो सकता है लोकसभा का राज्यसभा का कभी भी डिजोल्यूशन नहीं होता बिकॉज राज्यसभा इज अ परमानेंट हाउस तो बच्चे द मिनिट लोकसभा डिजोल्व सर्टन बिल्स लैप्स ठीक है अब लॉजिक क्या आपने दिमाग में रखना है लाइक वॉट इज दिंग दैट वी है अगर मेरा बिल लोकसभा पहुंच गया अब कैसे लोकसभा पहुंचेगा या फिर बिल हैज बिन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन लोकसभा या फिर बिल वाज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन राज्यसभा एंड हैज बिन ट्रांसफर टू लोकसभा पॉइंट इज मेरा बिल लोकसभा तक पहुंच गया और उसके बाद लोकसभा डिजोल्व हो गई ठीक है अगर मेरा बिल लोकसभा पहुंच गया उसके बाद लोकसभा डिजोल्व होगी वो बिल लैप्स होगा इट विल बी इट विल लैप्स what is the meaning of lapse can it never be reintroduced of course it can be but you see that government is ended no that government ka period has ended kya pata wohi sarkar dobara se elect ho ke new sarkar bana ke new lok sabha mein reintroduce kar de usko phir se likhit mein that's perfectly fine that can happen but at least that particular tenure of that government has ended and hence the bills that they have introduced which have reached lok sabha also lapse with it it's as simple as that but however if a bill is introduced in rajya sabha and it hasn't really gone till lok sabha and lok sabha is dissolved to fir wo bill lapse nahi hoga it's as simple as that theek hai ab iska ek exception hai exception kya hai maine kya bola tha rule if the bill has reached lok sabha before the dissolution of lok sabha there after the lok sabha dissolves the bill will lapse what is the exception to this the exception is कि अगर उस बिल के ऊपर प्रेसिडेंट ने जॉइंट सिटिंग बुला दी लोकसभा डिसॉल्व होने से पहले फिर वो बिल लैप्स नहीं होगा ठीक है लोकसभा के डिसॉल्व होने से पहले अगर किसी बिल के ऊपर प्रेसिडेंट ने जॉइंट सिटिंग बुला ली फिर वो बिल लैप्स नहीं होगा इट्स एज सिंपल एज दैट अब डेड लॉक के बारे में अगर हम बात करें कि यू you नो know, I've already told you joint sitting and midnight session and all of that, so I'm not getting into that right now, है ना? अब ये joint sitting होती क्यों है? Joint sitting बहुत reasons के वजह से होती है. हमने ये किया हुआ है वैसे nine to ten thirty के session में. So फटाफट से मैं तुम्हें बता रही हूँ फिर से. तो एक तो होता है motion of thanks, जहाँ पे joint sitting hundred percent होती है. And we've discussed that, so I'm not getting into it. एक होता है deadlock in a bill. Deadlock का मतलब क्या होता है? जब एक हाउस से दूसरे हाउस में गया दूसरे हाउस ने कम्प्लीटली मना कर दिया या दूसरे हाउस इट हैज रिमेन साइलेंट फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स इट सेड एब्सोल्युटली नथिंग ओवर द बिल और देर इज सम डिसएग्रीमेंट बिटवीन द टू हाउसेस सी द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द फर्स्ट एंड द थर्ड पॉइंट इज दैट इन द फर्स्ट पॉइंट द सेकंड हाउस हैज एब्सोल्युटली सेड नो इन द सेकंड इन द थर्ड पॉइंट द सेकंड हाउस हैज सेड चलो ठीक है यार आई एम ओपन टू सर्टेन डिस्कशंस बट दिस इज व्हाट वी वुड लाइक यू टू चेंज बट द फर्स्ट हाउस हैज Nothing doing, हमने नहीं चेंज करना सो दर इज डिसमेंट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू रिकन्सिडरेशन इन दीज थ्री केसेज द प्रेजिडेंट मे कॉल फॉर अ जॉइंट सिटिंग राइट नॉट शाल मे सो इट्स लाइक एन ऑप्शनल थिंग इट बेसिकली डिपेंड्स अपॉन द पी एम एंड द काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स अब आते हैं फैक्ट्स के ऊपर सबसे पहली बार एक विमेन रिजर्वेशन के बारे में किसने बात की तो राजीव गांधी की सरकार ने नाइनटीन एटी नाइन में बट एट द लोकल लेवल यू नो लोकल लेवल में तो विमेन रिजर्वेशन है यार ठीक है पर उसके बारे में भी सबसे पहला आइडिया किसका था राजीव गांधी की सरकार 1989 पहली बार विमेन रिजर्वेशन एट एनी लेवल व्हिच बेसिकली वाज द लोकल लेवल एट दैट टाइम किसके प्राइम मिनिस्टेरियल शिप में आया सो दैट वाज पीवी नरसिम्हा राव इन द ईयर 1992 ऑफ कोर्स वी नो अबाउट द 73 एंड द 74 अमेंडमेंट्स व्हिच केम इनटू इफेक्ट इन 1993 and spoke about panchayat and municipalities right 
अब इसमें लोकल इलेक्शंस में क्या बात है सो uh, बेसिकली so तो एक तो एस और एस को तो रिजर्वेशन मिलता ही है इन प्रमोशन इन प्रपोशन टू द पॉपुलेशन ओ uh, की अगर हम बात करें तो ये लिखित में है कि भाई राज्य डिसाइड करेगा द सेंटर इज नॉट रिली सेट दैट यू हैव टू हैव टू गिव रिजर्वेशन टू ओ बी सीज इन पंचायत एंड म्यूनिसपैलिटी बट इफ द स्टेट फील्स दैन द स्टेट कैन एब्सोल्यूटली डू दैट ना इफ वी टॉक अबाउट विमेन का रिजर्वेशन तो एक तो होगी रिजर्व सीट्स पंचायत म्यूनिसपैलिटी में एक हो गई अनरिजर्व सीट्स पंचायत और म्यूनिसपैलिटी में रिजर्व की भी वन थर्ड विल बी फॉर वेमेन and unreserved ki bhi one third will be for women and that's exactly what they have said even at the uh, union level right so uh, that is the reservation that has been given to women fir agar hum log baat kare uh, yeah so this is um, yeah pv narsamara right so now if we talk about hd devagoda he was the first to introduce the women reservation bill for uh, union level and this happened in 1996 um and it was termed as the 81st constitutional amendment bill but it did not get the approval of lok sabha um hd devagoda by the way right now is uh, popular because he is currently the longest uh, the member with the longest legislative experience theek hai jo aaj ki date pe sitting member hain he has the longest legislative experience in the sense lok sabha rajya sabha vidhan sabha vidhan parishad in that sense right longest legislative experience inhone hi ganga river water sharing treaty mein bhi sign kiya tha 1996 mein and this was along with uh, sheikh hasina right anyway coming back to this to uh, hd devagoda ki sarkar ne 81st of constitutional amendment bill banaya but it did not get the approval of lok sabha then it was referred to the geeta mukherjee committee बट बाय द टाइम गीता मुखर्जी कमेटी यू नो गेव इट्स रेकमेंडेशन वो लोकसभा डिजोल्व हो गई थी तो बिल लैप्स हो गया जो मैंने अभी आपको बताया था फिर मनमोहन सिंह की सरकार ने कुछ किया इन्होंने क्या किया दिस वॉज बेसिकली या दिस वॉज बेसिकली द हंड्रेड एंड एट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट ठीक है मनमोहन सिंह की सरकार ने जो इंट्रोड्यूस किया था दे सॉर्ट ऑफ यूज दैर ब्रेन एंड दे इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इट इन राज्यसभा बट दे डू नॉट गिव इट टू लोकसभा आई मीन दैट इज वेन दिस हैपन लोकसभा में नहीं गई चीज तो लोकसभा डिजोल्व हो गई तो बिल लैप्स नहीं हुआ ठीक है ऑल दो जो आज की डेट पे आप विमेन रिजर्वेशन के बारे में बात करते हैं दिस इज नॉट द हंड्रेड एंड एट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट बिल इज वेरी मच एक्टिव बट दैट इज नॉट द वन दैट इज बिन कन्वर्टेड इन टू एन एक्ट द प्रेजेंट डे गवर्नमेंट हैज मेड देयर ओन बिल दे बिट दे मेड सर्टन चेंजेस एंड दैट इज वेन दे है कन्वर्टेड दैट इन टू एन एक्ट ठीक है तो अभी के लिए क्या क्वेश्चन आएंगे तो सबसे पहले अंडर हुज प्राइम मिनिस्टेरियलशिप वॉज वेमेन रेजर्वेशन इवन स्पोकन अबाउट यू नो फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम दैट्स राजीव गांधी हु वॉज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर वेन वेमेन रेजर्वेशन वॉज गिवन एट द लोकल लेवल दैट इज पी वी नरसिम्हा राव who introduced the women reservation bill for the first time at the union level that is hd devagoda um right who presented the 108 constitutional amendment bill which hasn't lapsed yet that is manmohan singh and now we are talking about narendra modi so the 128th constitutional amendment bill which has been converted into 106th constitutional amendment act called the nari shakti vandan adhiniyam जिसमें 330 ए जो है वो वन थर्ड सीट्स की बात करता है वेमेन के लिए लोकसभा में 332 ए वन थर्ड सीट्स की बात करता है विधानसभा में स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली में है ना 239 डबल ए बात करता है एनसीपी ऑफ दिल्ली के लिए अच्छा देवर टू मेंबर्स हु अपोज द बिल वन इज मिस्टर ओवेसी एंड द अदर वन इज इम्तियाज जली दैट इज ऑल्सो अनादर ट्रिविया दैट यू कैन कीप इन माइंड अब ये सब कुछ पी आर एस से उठाया है ठीक है दिस दीज आर बेसिकली ऑथेंटिकेटेड परसेंटेजेस जस्ट लर्न दैम सो वेमेन रेजर्वेशन इन द वेरी फर्स्ट लोकसभा वॉज फाइव परसेंट करेंटली इट इज फिफ्टीन परसेंट राज्यसभा में वेमेन की रिप्रेजेंटेशन सॉरी इज थर्टीन परसेंट किसी भी स्टेट में बीस परसेंट से ज्यादा रिप्रेजेंटेशन नहीं है ओनली स्टेट विद वुमेन सी एम इज ऑफकोर्स वेस्ट बेंगाल राइट then highest uh, representation of women highest women representation not reservation representation is in which state that is chatisgarh 
state with only one female MLA is Himachal Pradesh, state with no female MLA is Mizoram. 61% seats जो है वो Rwanda के parliament में महिलाओं की है, ठीक है? And Rwanda also became the first country to have a female majority, मतलब 50% से ज़्यादा females in the parliament in the year 2008. And right now it is of course way more than 50%, it is 61%. And this this happened because there was a genocide that was there in Rwanda wherein most of the men were killed and so who were left were women only. So at that time, their laws were such that females couldn't even take ownership of their land. So they had to change all the law and change. So that's lovely. I mean, not the fact that there was a genocide, but the fact that they have 61% seats. And which one such a country is where women have outnumbered the men? I mean, 50% is more than 50%. So that is Cuba. Nicaragua, so all of them are three. Rwanda, Cuba, Nicaragua, where there are more female legislators. Next is in how many countries women have more than half of the seats in one house or in the lower house. Look, here we are talking about both houses. Here we are talking about only one house. If we are talking about only one house, there are six countries. Every functioning parliament in the world has at least one female representative for the first time in history. This is being said by the Inter-Parliamentary Union. Which we had done yesterday, when we talked about 9th P20. Then is, yeah, so this has happened in 2023. Which country has only one female in the parliament? That is Yemen. Right? Drastic reduction in women legislature has taken place in Algeria and Tunisia. Like from double digit, it has fallen down to single digit. Then is, of course, now, there are two things that this particular bill, uh, which has been converted into an act, talks about. Point is this, ki aaj ki date pe female representation uh, hai to sahi, lekin reservation will not come into effect unless two things happen. Pehli baat to demil, delimitation. दूसरी बात सेंसेस सेंसेस हमने कल कर लिया था बिकॉज़ वी स्पोक अबाउट द कास्ट सर्वे टुडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट डीलिमिटेशन ना डीलिमिटेशन कमिशन पहले तो समझ लो इट्स अ स्टैट्यूटरी बॉडी इट कैन नेवर बी क्वेश्चन नॉट बाय द पार्लियामेंट नॉट बाय एनी कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ एंड ऑलवेज बाइंडिंग डिसीजन होता है इनका काम क्या होता है कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी बनाना उसको रीड्रॉ करना इस तरीके से एंड ऑल्सो दे रिजर्व कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसीज फॉर एस सी एंड एस Census we've already done, but delimitation kitni baar hua hai, it has happened four times. Since it is a statutory body, there has to be an act. So, act, act was made in 1952 and then it was done in 1952. Uh, then the next act that was made was 1962, right? And the exercise took place in 1963. The 1972 ki act thi, 1973 mein, uh, it uh, was carried out the delimitation exercise. Those are do ki act. Uh, 2002 में ही delimitation हुआ। अब delimitation का मतलब क्या होता है? ये basically यही कहते हैं कि you know this is a constituency, these are the people, and this will be the leader for these people. Again, this is another constituency, these are the people who are residing here, and this will be leader two will take care of our, uh, constituency two, and leader one will take care of constituency one. Apart from the fact that they also, of course, reserve constituencies for SC as well as ST. How is it different from an election commission? Election commission is a constitutional body which is under article 324. It can be questioned through election commissions which are filed in the high court of that particular which has jurisdiction of that particular area. Or like uh, MPs ki jab disqualification hoti hai, I'm not talking about anti-defection law but in other cases mein, President takes the binding advice of ECI to remove them. So, for example, like in Rahul Gandhi's case, right? Now, if we talk about this, this particular amendment act says that when we have a census, we don't have a delimitation, we can't take it until we can take it in effect. Now, you have to keep two constitutional amendments in your mind. होता क्या है यू नो डी पापुलेशन स्टार्ट्स इंक्रीजिंग ऑफ कोर्स तो यू नो इफ देयर इज वन लीडर फॉर एवरी टेन पीपल सो फॉर एग्जांपल अर्लियर इन दिस कंस्टिट्यूएंसी देवर टेन पीपल एंड सो देवर इज वन लीडर हियर एंड देन टेन पीपल हियर वन लीडर हियर अब यू सी डी पापुलेशन इज नॉट गोइंग टू स्टॉप 
रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स नहीं ग्रो कर रहे हैं सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल यहाँ पे बीस बच्चे और पैदा हो गए है ना यहाँ पे थर्टी लोग और पैदा हो गए अगर वन एस टू टेन का रेशो लेके चलना है तो पचास और आ गए तो पांच और लीडर्स होने चाहिए बट ऐसा होता नहीं है बिकॉज ऑफकोर्स दैट एंटेल्स लॉट ऑफ खर्चा फ्रॉम द सरकार एंड सो द गवर्नमेंट सेज या थोड़ी देर के लिए ये ही दो लीडर्स से ये वाला एरिया चलवाते हैं एंड थोड़ी देर के बाद जब बहुत ज्यादा पॉपुलेशन हो जाएगी तो और लीडर्स ले आएंगे राइट सो वॉट इज द गवर्नमेंट इन इन दैट सेंस सेड इट इज सेड बाई वर्च्यू ऑफ द एटी फोर्थ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड वन की दो हजार छब्बीस तक हम लोग नंबर ऑफ सीट्स जो हैं जो कि फाइव फोर्टी थ्री है लोकसभा में टू फोर्टी फाइव है राज्यसभा में जहाँ पे इलेक्शन नॉमिनेशन होता है वो दैट इज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द नाइनटीन सेवेंटी वन सेंसिस तो कहते हैं टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी सिक्स के बाद जो सेंसिस होगा उस हिसाब से फिर हम नंबर ऑफ सीट्स बढ़ाएंगे तब तक उतनी ही रहेंगी दूसरी बात कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसीज जो हैं अब देखो इधर क्या है कि बीस यहाँ पे लोग आ गए थर्टी यहाँ पे आ गए If I can't make it into one is to ten का ratio, I mean I can at least you know sort of uh, change it in this sense कि यहाँ पे देखो this leader is taking care of thirty people, this leader is taking care of forty people. तो अगर मेरे को बिल्कुल थोड़ा equal type का करना है, equitable करना है, तो पांच लोग मैं बोलूँगी इस leader को कि भाई यहाँ के पांच लोग तुम देख लो, क्योंकि यहाँ पे extra ten है ना? तो इनको यहाँ के पांच लोग तुम देख लो और एक्स्ट्रा जो पांच लोग हैं वो तुम देख लो सो आई मीन इन दैट सेंस वी आर ट्राइंग टू डिलीनेट दीज कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसीज राइट सो दैट देर इज इक्विटेबल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ रिसोर्सिस फाइन सो इन दैट सेंस द कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसीज आर बेस्ड ऑन द टू थाउजेंड वन सेंसिस बट लीडर्स हमें लीडर हमने दो ही रखने हैं इन दैट सेंस तो एक एटी फोर्थ अमेंडमेंट एक्ट है वो लर्न करूँ उसके हिसाब से 1971 का सेंसिस ही चलेगा नंबर ऑफ सीट्स विल रिमेन अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट टिल 2026 टिल आफ्टर मतलब 2026 के बाद जो सेंसिस होगा ठीक है वो फिर जाके हम नंबर ऑफ सीट्स बढ़ाएंगे और कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसीज की बात कर ली वो है 2001 का सेंसिस एंड फाइनली दिस पर्टिकुलर एक्ट अभी तो वो कमेंस हुआ ही नहीं है पर जब ये कमेंस होगा उसके बाद ये फिफ्टीन ईयर्स तक रहेगा सो दीज आर दिंग्स यू कैन कीप इन माइंड बाकी आई एम गोइंग टू जस्ट रैटल इट आउट यू कैन टेक स्क्रीन शॉट ऑफ दिस दीज आर सर्टन फर्स्ट फीमेल्स टू डू सर्टन थिंग्स इन देर रिस्पेक्टिव फील्ड सो द फर्स्ट फीमेल डॉक्टर इज आनंदी गोपाल जोशी फर्स्ट फीमेल टीचर सावित्री बाई फुले फर्स्ट फीमेल आई पी एस ऑफिसर किरण बेदी ऑटो रिक्शा ड्राइवर इज शिला दावरे फर्स्ट फीमेल पायलट इज सरला ठकराल फर्स्ट फीमेल ट्रेन ड्राइवर सुरेखा यादव राफेल पायलट फ्लाइट लेफ्टिनेंट शिवांगी सिंह astronaut kalpana chavla first female this is all in india by the way first female indian prime minister indira gandhi uh, engineer lalita uh, cornelia sorab ji is the first female um, advocate of course you can also keep it in mind that the first female um, to be in the supreme court was fatima bivi right the first female in uh, judge of india was anna chandi ठीक है ये किया हुआ है हमने क्लास में बहुत बार एंड द फर्स्ट फीमेल टू बी द चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ हाई कोर्ट वाज लीला सेठ ठीक है चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ द हिमाचल प्रदेश हाई कोर्ट सो सुप्रीम कोर्ट वाली हो गई फातिमा बीवी जज हो गई एना चांडी एंड चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ हाई कोर्ट वाज लीला सेठ फर्स्ट फीमेल प्रेसिडेंट इन इंडिया प्रतिभा पाटिल फीमेल चीफ मिनिस्टर सुचेता कृपलानी एक्ट्रेस दुर्गा बाई कामत फर्स्ट फीमेल बैरिस्टर बैरिस्टर वॉज द टर्म दैट यूज टू बी यूटिलाइज देर ये दो बार हो गया है ना फिर है फीमेल पायलट भावना कान ठीक है फर्स्ट फीमेल न्यूरो सर्जन इन इंडिया राइट वन सेकेंड या ओके थोवर कान का एयरलाइन पायलट दुर्बा बैनर्जी दिस इज कमर्शियल एंड अदरवाइज राइट then is first female governor sarojini naidu first first female scientist kamla sohoni so just take a screenshot of it learn their names this is important cm ho gayi sucheta kriplani educated female of course that's why she taught right savitra bai uh, savitri bai phule first female defense minister this is rather questionable because you see indira gandhi had also taken the uh, role of being a defense minister back in the day when she was the prime minister फर्स्ट फीमेल ऑन्टरप्रेन्योर फर्स्ट फीमेल डेंटिस्ट ये सब लर्न कर लेना 
Rajkumari Amrita Kaur bahut important right she also was the brain behind aims then ruler on delhi's throne razia sultan ashok chakra nirja bhanot uh, first female to get the nobel um, mother teresa to climb the mount everest bachendri pal to become miss world rita faria nyanpit award ashpurna devi asian games mein gold mila kamaljeet sandhu book a prize arundhati roy bharat ratna subhu lakshmi arundhati roy is also very much in news right now and sanya mirza for tennis लेट्स गो अहेड द नेक्स्ट वन इज इंडिया दैट इज भारत भारत दैट इज इंडिया बड़ी सिंपल सी बात है नाम चेंज हमने किया नहीं है एनी लोग बोल रहे हैं तो बोल रहे हैं तो हमारे लिए ये इम्पोर्टेंट हो गया क्योंकि चलो इससे हम पहले शुरू करते हैं हमारी जो ऑफिशियल लैंग्वेजेस हैं जो लिस्ट है ऑफिशियल लैंग्वेजेस की वो एट शेड्यूल में है और कौन सी लैंग्वेज कहाँ पर यूज़ करनी है दिस इज़ इन पार्ट सेवनटीन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो इफ वी टॉक अबाउट पार्ट सेवनटीन so the official language of the union is hindi in devnagari script while according to the official languages act 1963 english shall also be an official language and that's the whole point right so ek english mein hai ek hindi mein hai jo bharatiya samvidhan hai uska pehla jo article hai wo kahega bharat that is india jo english mein likha hai that will say india that is bharat baki there was a supreme court mein pil that was dismissed in 2020 wherein they said you know we should remove india from the constitution because we don't we want to get over our colonial past they say india is already called bharat in the constitution itself and secondly the fact that we maintain that english is also an official language of the union as per the official languages act is not because of the colonial past I mean, it can be. It is a consequence of that. But there are a lot of non-Hindi speaking areas in India which are very much an integral part of India. We don't talk about any other language on any other level, and which is why both of these languages are very much official languages. So, just because both of them like to speak in Hindi, they like to speak in Hindi. 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 एंड भारत करके एक एंशियन किंग भी होते थे एंड या सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट हिंदुस्तान जो टर्म है इट इट इज यू नो थॉट टू हैव बीन डिराइव फ्रॉम हिंदू सिंधु नदी के कारण ये चीज़ हुई थी ठीक है एंड देन आकिमनेड पर्जन कॉन्क्वेस्ट के टाइम पे यू नो दे स्टार्टेड टॉकिंग अबाउट इंडिया एज हिंदुस्तान एंड after which a macedonian king alexander when he came so it it sort of got translated into india because these are different languages point is this is our name theek hai iske alawa agar hum baat kare eight schedule mein 22 official languages hain jisme shuruaat mein sirf aur sirf kitni thi 14 by virtue of the 21st amendment sindhi language was adopted by virtue of the 71st amendment konkani manipuri and nepali was introduced maybe you can learn this because of manipuri and its relevance 92nd amendment act ke karan bodi do bodo dogri santali maithili was also introduced apart from that we have six languages that are that are known as the classical languages in india which is dis- defined by the ministry of culture list of countries that have changed their names again you can take a screenshot learn it right turkey to turkey persia to iran siam to thailand burma to myanmar democratic kampuchia to cambodia holland to netherlands irish free state to ireland ceylon to republic of sri lanka and then further on to democratic socialist republic of sri lanka republic of macedonia to republic of north macedonia swaziland to eswatini es- Rhodesia to Zimbabwe, Czech Republic to Czechia. अब आगे करते हैं नेक्स्ट इज इंडियन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ लीगल मेटरोलॉजी सर्टिफिकेट्स अब पहले तो मैं आपको बताऊं कि इसकी जरूरत क्या है एंड उसके बाद वी विल अंडरस्टैंड इट सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल पहले के टाइम पे इफ एनी इक्विपमेंट मैन्युफैक्चर मेकिंग एनी काइंड ऑफ डिजिटल बैलेंस इन इन एनी पार्ट ऑफ आर कंट्री ही वॉन्टेड टू एक्सपोर्ट दैट टू एनी अदर कंट्री उसको क्या करना होता था उसको कुछ बारह कंट्रीज के पास जाना होता था सर्टिफिकेशन करने के लिए और तो जाके वो अपना इक्विपमेंट बेच सकता था तो ये सर्टिफिकेशन क्या है एंड व्हाट इज लीगल मेटरोलॉजी लेट्स फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड इट दिस इज द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ लीगल रिक्वायरमेंट्स फॉर मेजरमेंट्स और मेजरिंग सर्टन इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स ठीक है तो 
world over there are certain legal requirements of measurement of certain equipments which when you are selling you are using in world trade uska security uska accuracy in terms of weights and measurement wo decide karne wale factor ko bolte hain legal meteorology ab ye legal meteorology ke standardizations kaun set karta hai international level pe there is this body called international organization of legal meteorology meteorology and it was established in 1955 iska headquarter is in paris right and uh, pop joseph matthew is the president तो ये पर्टिकुलर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जो है ये इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड सेटिंग बॉडी है ऑफ लीगल मेटरोलॉजी अब न्यूज में क्या है दैट इंडिया की कंज्यूमर अफेयर्स मिनिस्ट्री ने अनाउंस किया है दैट इंडिया हैज बिकम द थर्टीन नेशन व्हिच इज ऑथराइज बाय द इंटरनेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ लीगल मेटरोलॉजी टू गिव सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन अब फिर से देखते हैं तो एक इक्विपमेंट मैन्युफैक्चरर है जो कि नोएडा में बैठा है उसने कोई चीज बनाई पहले इसको बेचने से पहले इसकी स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन इसकी मीटर मेजरमेंट uh, वगैरह के जो स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन है उसके लिए उसको ना एक सर्टिफिकेट लेकर आना पड़ता था वो पहले बारह किस कोई बारह देश में से किसी एक देश से उसको सर्टिफिकेट मिलता था अब उसको कहीं और जाने की जरूरत नहीं वो इंडिया से सर्टिफिकेट ले सकता है इनफैक्ट कोई और कंट्री अपार्ट फ्रॉम दीज थर्टीन कंट्रीज if they also want to indulge in trade they can also come to india and we will give them that kind of certificate of standardization theek hai so as to be able to do world trade so they, it's a huge thing so india became a member of the international organization of legal meteorology <laughs> meteorology I'm totally ruining the term right we became a member in 1956 and we also signed their metric convention and now we can also issue certificates of standardization बस इतनी सी चीज है और कुछ नहीं है लेट्स गो अहेड यूनेस्को ना यूनेस्को इज इन न्यूज फॉर सो मेनी रीजन आई एम नॉट इंक्लूडिंग द यूनेस्को कल्चरल सिटीज नेटवर्क येट बिकॉज वो नवंबर को हुआ था तो नवंबर में करेंगे ठीक है तो यूनेस्को कब बना नाइनटीन फोर्टी फाइव द हेड क्वार्टर इज पैरिस डायरेक्टर जनरल इज ऑड्री एज अले देर आर फोर्टी टू हेरिटेज साइट्स इन इंडिया नाउ वी नो एट द फर्स्ट वॉज यू नो recognized in 1983 red fort taj mahal ajanta elora caves latest is 41st is shanti niketan if we talk about shanti niketan a little so 1862 mein you know on a boat so basically shanti niketan was early earlier called bhubandanga and it was owned by the tagore family so 1862 mein as the story goes ek boat journey pe rabindranath tagore ke father devendranath tagore he spotted this landscape and he sort of decided to build an ashram over here and then later on what happened was in 1901 rabindranath tagore um, established a residential school over here theek hai and then later this residential school um, he converted into a world university at shantiniketan which was called the vishwabharati university in 1921 so zameen dekhi rabindranath tagore ne उसके ऊपर एक रेजिडेंशियल स्कूल बनाया सेंटर फॉर आर्ट बनाया 1901 में रबींद्रनाथ टैगोर ने एंड देन 20 इयर्स लेटर एस्टैब्लिश्ड अ वर्ल्ड यूनिवर्सिटी अ विश्व भारती यूनिवर्सिटी ओवर देयर राइट ओके देन द सेकंड वन इज द 42nd है ना दैट इज द सीक्रेट एनसेंबल्स ऑफ द होयसलास होयसला टेंपल कर्नाटक so which temples hoysala temple at belur halibith and so somanathapur in karnataka these are the ones that have become a part of it um so apart from that intangible sites ki agar hum baat kare to there are 14 first jo thi wo 2008 mein bani thi ramleela vedic chanting kutiyattam theater jo hai uh, kerala ka that became a part of it theek hai and uh, latest was 2021 14 durga puja kanchen jonga this is not kaziranga by the way right please don't get confused because everyone does is the only mixed world heritage site of india mixed world heritage site in the sense that you know it is not only known for its culture but also its flora and fauna in fact 42 may se 34 are cultural sites 7 are natural and one is of mixed type IUCN जो है जो आप बहुत बार पढ़ते हो वलरेबल क्रिटिकली इंडेंजर्ड ये सब कुछ कैटेगरीज में डालते हैं एनिमल्स को 
और दूसरा इंटरनेशनल काउंसिल ऑन मोन्यूमेंट्स ये इनकी एसोसिएटेड एजेंसीज हैं ठीक है अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द थ्री टेम्पल्स यू नो सो द अनाउंसमेंट वॉज मेड टू मेक दैम अ पार्ट ऑफ द टेंजिबल साइट्स इट वॉज मेड इन द फोर्टी फिफ्थ सेशन इन रियाद इन सऊदी अरेबिया होसलाज हेल्ड पार इन कर्नाटका फ्रॉम द टेंथ सेंचुरी टू द फोर्टीन सेंचुरी right and uh, two of the temples that made it to unesco are located in the cities that served as the capital of hosala theek hai and well that is what you can keep in mind hoseleshwar temple in halibidu is believed to be the largest shiv temple so these are certain things that you can keep in mind you can take a screenshot read it learn it usa and unesco ke bare mein agar hum baat kare तो 2017 में यूएस ने नोटिफाई किया था कि हमने नहीं रहना इसका पार्ट यू नो एट दैट टाइम द यूनेस्को डायरेक्टर जनरल वाज इरीना बोकोवा एंड द यूएस विड्रॉल इट टुक प्लेस टुक इफेक्ट ऑन द 31st ऑफ दिसंबर 2018 इवन इजराइल लेफ्ट इट एट दैट टाइम बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट यूनेस्को गेव रिकग्नेशन टू पैलेस्टीन इन टू सो देर वॉज अ लॉर्ड ऑफ लाइफ प्रॉब्लम देर बट नाउ यू एस एज बिकम अ पार्ट ऑफ इट अगेन इन टू not israel though us had also pulled out of unesco in 1984 during uh, us president ronald reagan's administration and then rejoined in 2003 during george bush's presidency so you don't have to get into so many details ye to bas chalo theek hai maine likh diya hai kyunki wo unesco ki site pe tha par iske alawa aapne sirf itna karna hai ki you know these are sacred ensembles of ursula तीन जगहों का नाम आपने लर्न कर लिया एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ इट इज इम्पोर्टेंट दिस यू कैन रीड ऑन योर ओन फोर्टी फिफ्थ सेशन प्लीज कीप इट इन माइंड फिर आ गया ओसीआई ओसीआई का मतलब क्या होता है कि बिकॉज ऑफ द इंडिया कैनेडा प्रॉब्लम दैट इज टेकिंग प्लेस यू नो सो इंडिया इज इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ कैंसलिंग ओ सी आई वॉट इज ओ सी आई नाउ एन आर आई का क्या मतलब होता है कोई एक इंडियन सिटीजन हु वॉन्ट्स टू गो अब्रॉड एंड ही वॉन्ट्स टू वर्क अब्रॉड लेकिन एवरी टाइम यू कैन स्टैंड इन अ लाइन एंड आस्क फॉर वीजाज एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट सो ही और शी रिक्वायर्स सम मल्टीपल एंट्री वर्क वीजा सिस्टम है ना तो इसी तरीके से जब एक फॉरेनर हमारे देश में आ रहा है सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इलॉन मास्क वॉन्ट्स टू कम टू इंडिया एंड वर्क इन इंडिया बट ही डजेंट वॉन्ट टू बिकम एन इंडियन सिटीजन बट ही वॉन्ट्स मल्टीपल एंट्री वर्क वीजा सो दैट ही डजेंट बिकॉज हिज यू नो हिज लाइफ इज इन अनादर कंट्री he wishes to work here but he wishes to go back very very frequently so he wants a very very simple system for himself so aise type ke overseas logon ke liye humne banaya overseas citizen of india ek to ye hai aur dusra aur kisko mil sakta hai <laughs> matlab foreigner ho <laughs> that foreigner may or may not have an indian origin indian origin in the sense like rishi sunak right um so such kind of people if they want to come to india they want a multiple entry work visa that is oci ab wo wali cheez hum cancel kar rahe hain two people who are in canada of course gurpatwan singh pannu ko oci to nahi denge na so that is why this is in news so that is all that you have to keep in mind kisko milta hai aise logon ko who was a citizen of india any time after 26 january 1950 or who was eligible to be a citizen um after the commencement of our constitution or who be- belong to a part that became a part of india after 15th august parts such as goa hai na parts such as puducherry daman and diu dadra nagar haveli sikkim aise type ke parts jo ki bachcha hai koi aise insaan ka jo citizen reh chuka hai india mein theek hai you don't have to get into all of this this is just for your understanding just understand that this is given to a foreign national moreover spouse bhi ho sakta hai na foreign origin usko matlab aap kaam karne aa rahe ho to aap apni biwi bachcho ke sath bhi aaoge to biwi ko bhi mil sakta hai in that sense acha benefit kya hai multiple entry work visa hai i already told you right and they can buy properties but not agricultural property kyunki fir bhai hamari agrarian economy ka kachra ho jayega acha who are the ones who are not uh, allowed to be oci people who are related to or whose parents or grandparents or great grandparents had been or are citizens of pakistan bangladesh or any such country jo sarkar bole bhai iska hum nahi part banana chahte because you have to understand bangladesh uh, was once upon a time east pakistan no so what do we have to learn here india canada ke problem mein oci karke ek cheez hai jo ki hum log nahi de rahe 
to Canadians. OCI is given to a foreigner with or without Indian origin who wants to do uh, work in India. So it's a multiple entry work visa. Usually we don't give it to people who belong to Pakistan and Bangladesh or it can be any other country that we wish to and that country now includes Canada. For some time, a lot of time we don't know. Then is Arogya Manthan 2023. Now Arogya Manthan 2023 graced by Dr. Mansuk Mandavia right and uh, what are they basically doing they are celebrating five years of ayushman bharat and two years of ayushman bharat digital mission so pansal of ayushman bharat pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana and two sal of ayushman bharat digital mission now what is the difference now jan arogya yojana it was um, it was introduced in the year 2018 you don't have to learn 23rd september Right, it was launched in Ranchi. Panch lakh ki health insurance milti hai per family per year, regardless of the size of the family. The chief executive officer of this scheme is R S Sharma. Ayushman Bharat Divas is celebrated on the thirtieth of April. The theme is Swasthi Amrit. It was recommended by the National Health Policy of two thousand seventeen. Acha second jo hai that is Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission. जो कि डिजिटल आईडी देना चाहता है टू ऑल इंडियंस दैट वाज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन 2021 अगेन 27 सितंबर नो नीड टू लर्न इसके दो साल कंप्लीट हो हैं देन दिस डिजिटल मिशन वाली चीज इट वाज अनाउंस्ड ऑन द 15th ऑफ अगस्त 2020 राइट इंप्लीमेंटिंग एजेंसीज नेशनल हेल्थ अथॉरिटी नाउ व्हाट इज नेशनल हेल्थ अथॉरिटी इट इज अ सक्सेसर ऑफ नेशनल हेल्थ एजेंसी and uh, which was made in 2018 because that is when jan arogya yojana came into being fir uske baad usko reconstitute kiya aur 2019 mein usko national health authority bana diya jiska ceo is rs sharma hence i said ceo of this mission is rs sharma now certain awards were given award for highest ayushman card creation was earned by assam nagaland Jam jammu and kashmir fir highest percentage of utilization was earned by Karnataka and Tripura. For digital mission ke andar, Andhra Pradesh became the top state in linking the health records. Uttar Pradesh became the top state in generation of uh, scan tokens. Thik hai? Ab kya hai? Sabse pehli jo beneficiary thi iske andar, paan saal ki Karishma. She was also felicitated. Sorry. She was also felicitated. All right? She is also five years old. This scheme is also five years old, and she was the first beneficiary of this scheme. And Kerala has won the Arogya Manthan two thousand twenty three award for providing the maximum number of free medical treatments. So, which categories? Ho gaye? Ek to ho gaya award for highest card creation. Fir ho gaya highest percentage of utilization. Then is linking. Then is top generation of tokens under this scheme. then is the child who was the first beneficiary and then number of free medical treatments kindly learn it take a screenshot make a note of it learn it then is aditya l1 mission very simple launch from shri hari kota first indian mission to study the sun's atmosphere and solar winds and all sath hamare payloads hain sath payloads kaun se hain agar mere ko acronym aata hai और थोड़ा बहुत आइडिया है तो आई कैन फिगर इट आउट फ्रॉम दी एम सी राइट सो फर्स्ट इज पापा सेकंड इज सूट सिम सोलेक्स वेल्थ हेलियोस एस्पेक्ट्स राइट वी मेड अ वेरी फनी वे टू लर्न दिस चलो बता ही देते हैं नहीं मैं नहीं बता रही तुम लोग बोलोगे कुछ भी बोल रहे हो सो यू सी पापा वेरिंग अ सूट पुटिंग अ सिम इन हिज फोन वेरिंग अ रोलेक्स इंस्टेड ऑफ सोलेक्स राइट एंड विद वेल क्रो looking very handsome and this aspects you can do on your own so these are the seven payloads that we have right 1.5 ton ki satellite hai placed in the halo orbit uh, at the lagrange point about 1.5 kilometers from earth lagrange point abhi dekhenge kya hota hai it will not land on the sun nor will it approach it any closer it will just observe it launch vehicle is pslv c57 very important प्रोजेक्ट डायरेक्टर इज निगार शाह जी शी इज अ फीमेल आ अगेन वही वाली थीम को नजर में रखते हुए काइंडली लर्न द नेम जैसे आपने दूसरा चंद्रयान के लिए भी किया है 
लैगरेंज पॉइंट क्या है जहाँ पे दो बॉडीज का जो ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स है दैट इक्वल्स द सेंट्रिपिटल फोर्स मतलब बेसिकली एक चीज स्टेबल रह जाती है डजेंट क्रैश इन टू एनी थिंग राइट दैट इज अ लैग रेंज पॉइंट तो इट वॉज नेम्ड आफ्टर एन इटालियन फ्रेंच मैथमेटिशियन जोजफ लुई लैगरेंज राइट देर आर फाइव सच लैग रेंज पॉइंट्स आउट ऑफ विच थ्री आर स्टेबल टू आर अनस्टेबल एल वन इज वेर आदित्य एल वन हैज बिन प्लेस्ड इसके अलावा अदर सोलर मिशन सो देर इज सोहो सोहो इज बाय नासा एंड ई एस ए यूरोपियन स्पेस एजेंसी देर इज स्टीरियो बाय नासा थिनोड बाय जाक्सा एस डी ओ सोलर डायनामिक्स ऑब्जर्वेटरी बाय नासा आयरिस बाय नासा सोलर ऑर्बिटर बाय ई एस ए एंड नासा टेक अ स्क्रीन शॉट ऑफ दिस लर्न इट अप देन इज पाक सोलर प्रोब बाय नासा एंड बेपी कोलम्बी बाय ई एस ए एंड जाक्सा बेपी कोलम्बो होना चाहिए एनी वे कलिप्सो मिशन जो है वो खत्म हो चुका है कलिप्सो मिशन क्या था इट वॉज लॉन्च इन टू थाउजेंड सिक्स द फुल फॉर्म इज क्लाउड एरोसो लाइडर एंड इंफ्रा रेड पाथ फाइंडर सैटेलाइट ऑब्जर्वेशन बेसिकली इन सिंपल लैंग्वेज क्लाउड्स और एरोसोल्स मतलब कैसे इम्पैक्ट करता है एरोसोल्स कैसे इम्पैक्ट करते हैं अर्थ के क्लाइमेट को तो टू थाउजेंड सिक्स में ये शुरू हुआ था लेकिन लैक ऑफ प्रोपेलेंट के कारण इट एंडेड वेरी रिसेंटली ठीक है इट इज़ अ सैटेलाइट बेस्ड ऑब्जर्वेटरी यू नो दैट Uh, the rocket was delta right 314 learn kar lo delta learn kar lo i don't really think they will uh, irritate you with respect to this but regardless i have kept it here vanderberg california was the launch site it's a joint project it was a joint project between nasa and the french space agency um and that is that right then is osiris rex ki baat kare so this is basically because we wanted to bring back a, a part of the asteroid bennu which has already happened now every line can be made into a uh, mcq let's read it firstly the full form of osiris rex rex this is origin spectral interpretation resource identification and security regolith explorer ye kisne banaya hai nasa ne banaya hai iska mission hai एस्ट्रॉयड को पढ़ना था और उसको रिटर्न करना था देर आर टू अदर नेम्स गिवन टू इट वन जीरो वन नाइन फाइव फाइव बेनू और नाइनटीन नाइनटी नाइन आर क्यू थर्टी सिक्स प्लीज इसको लर्न करो ठीक है अच्छा हु डिस्कवर्ड बेनू वेन वॉज इट डिस्कवर्ड इट वॉज डिस्कवर्ड इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी नाइन एंड बाय लिंकन नियर अर्थ एस्ट्रॉयड रिसर्च टेलीस्कोप ठीक है दिस वॉज इन न्यू मैक्सिको इट इज नेम्ड आफ्टर एन एंशंट इजिप्शन बर्ड डी and a third grade student michael puzio won a contest in 2013 and he is the one who named it bennu right uh, this also has another term i mean another name which is a nickname that the scientists have made it is called the trickster asteroid because they, it seemed to have baffled the team every step of the way theek hai so char naam ho gaye na ek to ho gaya 101955 bennu fir ho gaya 1999 rq36 then uske baad aa gaya bennu of course and then no aa gaya trickster asteroid right so there is one in a like bahut hi kam chances you don't have to learn this but bahut hi kam chances that it will approach the earth and it will you know uh, have a potential impact but the scientists say that september 24 2182 is a most significant date where a potential impact might happen but there are very less chances of it right despite this bennu is considered to be one of the two most hazardous known asteroids in the solar system along with another asteroid which is 1950 da so ye kafi hazardous mana jata hai fir uh, okay ye sab khatam hone ke baad jo space craft hai it is planned to conduct a flyby not a landing but a flyby of another asteroid which is 9942 apophis right so which will be called the osiris apex but that will happen later so when was it launched 2016 it entered into the orbit of bennu in 2018 touched down and successfully collected a sample in 2020 and returned to earth in 2023 around 250 g theek hai aur ye apophis wala jo hai wo 2029 mein hoga ja ke now next there are certain other asteroids uh, wala mission that i'm going to talk about so nasa ka stardust mission tha 1999 mein 
that got some microscopic samples from a trail of a comet called Well 2. Hayabusa was another mission launched by JAXA in 2003, returned uh, less than one milligram of an asteroid called Itokawa. Hayabusa 2, again JAXA 2014, returned 5.4 gram from asteroid Ryugu. And you can then understand this is 250 gram, right? So, so it is a substantial amount. Then if we talk about this, where is it on today's date? Where is it being placed? So it is in the Smithsonian uh, National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. That is where it has been kept. So you can learn this. Let's go ahead. Then is Navic and iPhone 15 Pro. So basically GPS ki jaga, jo hamara navigation in Indian constellation, hamara desi version of GPS hai, uske saath link honge ab hamare phones. And the first one to do that um, in the Apple series is I Apple iPhone 15 Pro. It can Pro Max, it will support India's very own GPS system, which is commonly called Navic. Now what else do we have to learn? Baki sare smartphones 2025 tak karenge. Homegrown navigation systems ke naam agar pooch liye to US ka GPS, European Union ka Galileo, Russia ka GLONASS, China ka BIDU, right? Um, now navigation in Indian constellation ki baat kare to earlier it was called the IRNSS which is Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System, right? It was supposed to be a total of 8 satellites out of which only 7 remain active as of now which are supposed to be operating 24 into 7. ठीक है, सबसे पहला जो launch हुआ था, that was IRNSS1A and the 8th one was IRNSS1I, which was launched in 2018. Then the government changed the name in 2016. So very first was 2013, government changed the name in 2016, changed it to NAVIC, Navigation in Indian Constellation. And the final one in this series was in 2018. वो अलग बात है कि NBS 01 सैटेलाइट अभी 2023 में एक न्यू जेनरेशन वाली सैटेलाइट से लोग लॉन्च करना शुरू कर चुके हैं। It is also recognized by the International Maritime Organization, so एक इंटरनेशनल बॉडी का भी ठप्पा लग चुका है that it is a very very good system, right? And well, that is just about it. Now we know iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max and all of that, right? Let's go ahead. The next one is Project Falcon NPCI. So Project Falcon kya hai? NPCI ne launch kiya apna khud ka blockchain backed open source Project Falcon. 2020 mein Vajra karke unho ne introduce kiya tha which is a payment settlement system using this technology which is the blockchain technology. It is supposed to be more, it is supposed to be safer than other technologies. Matlab is mein hack wagaira bhoat easily nahi kiya ja sakta. So NPCI, it has launched uh, Falcon. It is an open source project that aims to simplify the management and use of blockchain based on two things, Hyperledger Fabric and supported on Kubernetes clusters. So very simple si baat hai, Hyperledger Fabric up soch lo, ye ek is tarike ka, so it's, Hyperledger Fabric is basically how you make these systems, right? Um, the system will be created, it, will, it can be an open platform, it can also be a private platform that can be created and, um, and how do you monitor this entire thing, ye pure ke pure operational task jo honge us particular application mein ya us platform pe, wo automate karne wala jo system hai that is Kubernetes, but the automate in the sense ki apne aap wo theek rahega, you know your applications according to the need of the user, uh, will keep uh, getting revamped and you'll be able to monitor the applications and all. So NPCI is National Payment Corporation of India. It was made in 2008. It's a statutory body that was made under the Payment and Settlement Act of 2007. MD CEO is Dilip Asbe and the non-executive chairman, non-executive because obviously executive ka kaam to Dilip Asbe karega. So chairman is Biswa Mohan Mahapatra. So what do we have to learn? What is the name? Project Falcon. Also, Vajra is something that you should ideally learn. This is just for your understanding. Even if you skip it, it works. But this is something that you need to learn that is important. Let's go ahead. The next one is a drone, AG3655. This is basically going to be used for agriculture. And it has recently received a certification approval from the Director General of Civil Aviation. So, who has made it? Marut Drones has made it. 
क्या बनाया एक किसान ड्रोन बनाया और क्या मिला उसको अप्रूवल मिल गया इसको बाय द डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ सिविल एविएशन नाउ द रूल्स ऑफ 2021 व्हिच इज कॉल्ड द अनमैंड एयरक्राफ्ट रूल्स ऑफ 2021 दे बेसिकली से कि अगर आपने ड्रोन्स को यूज करना है इन द इंडियन एयर स्पेस देन इट रिक्वायर्स अ यूनिक आइडेंटिफिकेशन नंबर व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी प्रोवाइडेड बाय द डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ सिविल एविएशन हु इज द डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ सिविल एविएशन दिस इज श्री विक्रम देव दत्त ठीक है अब ए जी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव एस जो है ये स्मॉल कैटेगरी का ड्रोन है लेस देन ट्वेंटी फाइव के जी इट वॉज डिजाइन एंड डेवलप बाई मारो ड्रोन हेडक्वार्टर इज हैदराबाद एंड इट इज द फर्स्ट सच स्मॉल कैटेगरी एग्रीकल्चरल ड्रोन टू रिसीव सच एन अप्रूवल इंड्योरेंस इज ऑफ ट्वेंटी टू मिनट्स राइट एंड सो इट विल बी यूज फॉर स्प्रेइंग पेस्टिसाइड एंड ग्रेन्यूल स्प्रेडर्स मतलब बेसिकली इट्स अ वेरी वेरी गुड थिंग फॉर द एग्रीकल्चरल सेक्टर तो आपने ये सारी चीजें आपने कर ली लर्न लेट्स गो अड द नेक्स्ट वन इज ग्रीन रोबोटिक्स ने एक चीज बनाई है कॉल इंद्रजल ग्रीन रोबोटिक्स भी एक हैदराबाद बेस्ड कंपनी है इंद्रजल क्या है इंडिया इनॉगरल ए आई ड्रिवन एंटी ड्रोन सिस्टम ड्रोन एंटी ड्रोन सिस्टम है ठीक है सो दिस वॉज बेसिकली द ग्रैंड अनवेलिंग ऑफ द सेम टू प्लेस इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल गुरमीत सिंह हु इज द गवर्नर ऑफ उत्तराखंड right and uh, the test was conducted in a 79 acre test facility in hyderabad and it it has the ability to detect identify classify track even neutralize the threats in real time it can extend to 360 degrees and uh, over area spanning up to 4000 square kilometers and um, checks every kind of um, unmanned autonomous threats the founder ceo of indrajal is kiran raju then comes your c295 aircraft which is jo kafi zyada news mein tha so in the year 2022 the foundation stone for the manufacturing of c295 transport aircraft facility was set up in vadodara right and uh, the two agencies that are uh, associated here is one is airbus defense and space and one is tata advanced system limited ye pehli baar hoga ki ek private sector company jo hai wo ek manufacture karegi complete aircraft ko manufacture karegi in india of course a certain portion of it will be given to us by airbus and the rest of it will be made by tata advanced system limited but it will be completely made in india by a private sector company So it's a transport aircraft of five to ten ton capacity, right? Flight endurance is up to eleven hours. It will replace what? Very important. It will replace uh, the aging fleet of Avro seven forty eight planes. Avro seven forty eight planes are British origin, twin engine, turbo prop, military transport, right? And uh, it will jointly execute this project. Uh, it is under the Make in India initiative. ठीक है जॉइंटली इन द सेंस कुछ उधर से भी मिलेगा कुछ यू नो टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर भी होगा बट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग मोस्टली इधर होगी बाद में सो so, बाद में का क्या मतलब है लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दैट एयर बस विल सप्लाई द फर्स्ट सिक्सटीन एयरक्राफ्ट्स इन अ फ्लाई अवे कंडीशन मतलब बिल्कुल टिप टॉप कंडीशन में जिसको हम यूज कर सकते हैं बिटवीन सेप्टेम्बर एंड विच इज एग्जैक्टली वट इज हैपन रिमेनिंग फोर्टी विल बी असेंबल्ड इन इंडिया बाई द टाटाज एंटरप्राइज राइट um now indian air force on september 13 received the first of the 56c295 um and it can carry up to 9 tens of payload and you know up to or 71 personnel which is great maximum cruise speed is 260 um which is also very very nice right this is not something that you have to really learn so i'm not even getting into that अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट मेक इन इंडिया की बात मैंने ऑलरेडी आपको बता दी इससे पहले हिंदुस्तान एरोनॉटिकल लिमिटेड का यू नो मोनोपोली था ओवर द मैन्युफैक्चर ऑफ मिलिट्री एयरक्राफ्ट सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम दैट अनदर प्राइवेट सेक्टर एंटरप्राइज विल बी एबल टू डू दैट द थर्टी सेकेंड एयरक्राफ्ट विच इज शेड्यूल्ड फॉर डिलीवरी इन द फर्स्ट क्वार्टर ऑफ टू विल बी नियरली फुल्ली इंडियन राइट baki uh, european defense major it will keep providing us spare support for 10 years spare parts and this and that right and um, last year the tata facility is already set up a factory in hyderabad 
जहाँ पे वो मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कर रहे हैं एयर फ्रेम कॉम्पोनेंट्स की फ्यूजलेज की टेल की है ना जो कि उन लोगों ने शुरू कर दी वडोदरा में मैन्युफैक्चरिंग होगी यहाँ पे तो स्पेयर पार्ट्स की बात हो रही है बाकी सी टू नाइन्टी फाइव प्रोग्राम का हेड इज जॉर्ज टैमरिट एंड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट एयर बस इट इज द वर्ल्ड सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट मेकर ऑफ कमर्शियल एयरक्राफ्ट आफ्टर बोइंग and it is co-owned by german french spanish european aeronautic defense and space company um and the ceo of the same is jium fore right let's go ahead the next one is bharat drone shakti ye bahut simple hai ye bharat drone shakti is also related to 290 c295 ye made in addition tha right uh, hinden air base uh, up gaziabad mein ye shuru hua tha jointly by shuru hua tha matlab इट हैपन दर राइट एंड शुरू भी हुआ था इनफैक्ट क्योंकि फर्स्ट एडिशन है ऑर्गेनाइज जॉइंटली बाई इंडियन एयरफोर्स एंड ड्रोन फेडरेशन ऑफ इंडिया एंड इट सॉ द फॉर्मल इंडक्शन ऑफ सी टू नाइन्टी फाइव लेट्स गो अड द नेक्स्ट वन इज टिमोर लेस्ट में इंडिया की एम्बेसी खुलने वाली है एसोसिएशन ऑफ साउथ ईस्ट एशियन नेशन एंड इंडिया वी ऑलरेडी डन राइट एटीन जी ट्वेंटी समिट ऑल्सो ऑलरेडी डन इन आर नाइन टू टेन थर्टी सेशन आई एम नॉट गेटिंग इन टू दैट योर so that is where this was announced that um, we are going to make this is not cbi this is dili that's their capital timorless ka capital is dili right so that is where the embassy will be made apart from that india was one of the early countries to establish them diplomatic relations with timorless and um, you know our then minister of state for external affairs shri omar abdullah in 2002 also went for their independence day celebration and it timorless also supports india's permanent membership of the un security council right and um, also co-sponsored the resolution on yoga so this uh, permanent membership wali cheez it was announced by their pm al qatiri in 2003 at the un united nation general assembly important for us their vice minister of health um, Anna Isabel visited India to attend uh, a business meet in Chennai. So you know we have great diplomatic relations with them. Ye na bhi learn karo, ye hundred percent karo. ठीक है. फिर आ गया West Coast Refinery Project. West Coast Refinery Project क्या है? It was made in two thousand fourteen. It is also called the Ratnagiri Refinery and Petrochemical Limited. Um, इंडिया की सबसे बड़ी ग्रीन फील्ड होती है पहली बार कोई इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बनाना है ना बने हुए इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पे कोई चेंजेस करना होता है ब्राउन फील्ड पहली बार बनाना है इस ग्रीन फील्ड सो इट वाज एनविजन एज इंडिया लार्जेस्ट ग्रीन फील्ड रिफाइनरी विद अ कैपेसिटी ऑफ सिक्सटी मिलियन टन पर एन राइट एंड लोकेशन ऑफकोर्स इज द वेस्टर्न कोस्ट इसलिए वेस्ट कोस्ट बोलते हैं स्पेसिफिकली इन रत्नागिरी महाराष्ट्र इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू प्रोड्यूस अबाउट वन मिलियन बैरल्स ऑफ ऑयल अ डे ठीक है and uh, this uh, west coast refinery project uh, started as a joint venture uh, amongst three um, psus one is indian oil corporation limited second is bharat petroleum corporation limited third is hindustan petroleum corporation limited formed in 2017 50 is to 25 is to 25 ke ratio mein so conceptualized in 2014 the joint venture was made in 2017 तो क्या है कि 2019 में सऊदी आराम को जो कंपनी है एंड दी यू नो दे आल्सो डिसाइडेड दैट वी वांट टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ इट ठीक है सो दे अक्वायर्ड अ 50 परसेंट स्टेक इन द प्रोजेक्ट एंड दे रिसेंटली अग्री टू स्पीड इट अप ठीक है सो प्योरली इन सेटअप कॉस्ट दिस कंपनी इज आल्सो पुट इन मनी एंड रिसेंटली वाइज इट इन न्यूज बिकॉज दे सेड दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्पीड अप दिस एंटायर प्रोजेक्ट लेट्स गो अ The next one is your Grand Slam. So I've consolidated the entire thing together. All is left is learning, right? So keep taking screenshots, guys. I know you don't have to do it in a day. Take two, take three, but learn it up because it's very important. So Grand Slams की बात करें तो tennis की बात हो रही है. एक same calendar year में अगर सारे के सारे चारों के चारों titles लिए तो वो एक अलग चीज हो जाती है. कभी कभार आप डिफरेंट डिफरेंट ईयर्स में चारों के चारों टूर्नामेंट्स आप जीतते हो ऑस्ट्रेलियन ओपन यूएस ओपन फ्रेंच ओपन विम्बल्डन तो उसको नॉन कैलेंडर ईयर ग्रैंड स्लैम टाइटल भी बोल देते हैं है ना ऑल्सो कॉल करियर ग्रैंड स्लैम दे आर ऑल्सो रेफर टू एज मेजर्स सो लेट्स स्टार्ट ऑफ विद इट सो ऑस्ट्रेलियन ओपन की बात करें 
अभी ये हार्ड कोर्ट में खेला जाता है 2023 सिंगल्स मेन इज नोवाक जोकोविच एंड वुमेन इज अरीना साबलेंका डबल मेंस में अगर हम बात करें तो रेंकी हिजिकाटा एंड जेसन कबलर द सेकंड वन इट्स प्रोनाउंस्ड एज किबलर एक्चुअली वुमेन की अगर हम बात करें दिस इज बारबोरा क्रिचिकोवा एंड कैटरीना सिमियाकोवा राइट so take a while take a screenshot learn it up what else to say most single title in um, australian open is novak djokovic 10 times women is uh, margaret court i'm not talking about grand slams i'm talking about one of them i'm only talking about australian open here right most double titles ki baat kare this is adrian quist from australia thelma from australia right um maybe don't focus on this a lot maybe eh, okay so you can do it this way ek din lo sare ke sare singles run karo fir dusre din sare ke sare doubles fir sare ke sare mixed doubles aise karke jab singles learn kar rahe ho to most single titles saath mein kar lo is tarike se learn kar lo so mixed doubles again i'm just going to rattle it out you please take a screenshot of it you don't need to care about how it started do care about where is it played right now So Luzia Stefani and Rafael Matos both from Brazil most titles also you should know then the second in the year is basically French Open started in 1891 again men is Novak Djokovic and if we talk about female this is Iga Swiatek Swiatek right so Poland and if we talk about men's double again you have to learn this up so please learn it it's very very important you can also see that you know sometimes the names sort of are similar in different tournaments um there is no other way to do it agar nahi learn hota agar nahi pata tennis ke bare mein to bar bar likh ke learn karo ek din singles ka sara learn karo ek din doubles ka karo ek din mixed doubles ka karo and jab tak exam nahi hota bar 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 learn karo theek hai ye ho jayega itni koi badi baat nahi hai these are just names don't even have to learn the entire thing um just learn the first name or the last name right and it will be simple don't worry then is your wimbledon again uh third in the year please learn the names of the champions i'm giving you a minute to take a screenshot right so again champions carlos alcaraz this is the only um in this particular year where novak djokovic is not really leading in one of the tournaments in the grand slam right otherwise he is always there uh yeah so we can go ahead then us open kar lo learn beta ye sab kuch na hi learn karo theek hai it doesn't matter kyunki karne ke liye bahut kuch hai but isko kar lo theek hai so that is that about your grand slams then uh, mixed doubles ho gaye aapke us open ke right uh, kazakhstan and all of that yes i think you have done it Now the next one is International Tennis Hall of Fame. This is Leander Paes. He has won the fan vote, uh, to be in the Hall of Fame. So, होता क्या है कि इसके अंदर दो दो this is like step one of being a part of the Hall of Fame. Uh, fan voting is one of the two steps, right? In addition to fan vote, there is also official voting group that comprises of tennis journalists and historians and X Y Z. So he's crossed the first step. Who is he? He's Leander Paes. and um, he is a winner of 18 grand slam titles including 8 in doubles and 10 in mixed doubles right he is one of the only three men in tennis history to achieve grand slam titles in both the disciplines which is doubles and mixed doubles and he competed for india on the international stage for three decades right and um, yeah so he is um, in the davis cup he has the record holder for most doubles victories time so he also competed in a record 7 olympic games uh, capturing bronze medal at the 1996 atlanta games okay and this is basically uh, he was the first indian to win an individual medal since kt jadhav you know who was the first ever from india to win a medal in the 1952 helsinki olympics and earlier pace became the first asian man to even be nominated for this particular um, hall of fame right so international tennis hall of fame let's see whether he wins it or not but as of now he's won the fan vote 
then bacche comes your asia cup 2023 title this is also known as super 11 asia cup uh, for sponsorship reasons 16th edition hua hai theek hai and pakistan was the official host but also sri lanka for select matches involving india the tournament was contested by 16 it was the first asia cup to be held in multiple countries and that is basically because india pakistan wali cheez hai na to sri lanka was the defending champion matlab last year ka to kaun si teams thi afghanistan bangladesh india pakistan sri lanka and they were joined by nepal right uh, originally the tournament was supposed to take place in 2021 but pandemic ke karan nahi hua india defeated sri lanka by 10 wickets in the final to win their 8th asia cup um, apart from that you can keep in mind uh, 13 matches hue the player of the series is kuldeep yadav shubman gill was the most runs matisha pathirana was the one with the most wickets right uh, 2022 mein like i said you know bcci basically said that india will not travel to pakistan then there was a lot of discussion there wherein pakistan said no you can't like take away our hosting rights and so hence then a neutral uh, uh, ground was decided which was in uh, sri lanka now winner uh, india eight bari jeeta hai most amount of time sri lanka six times pakistan twice runners up ki baat kare india thrice sri lanka seven times pakistan three times bangladesh three times then comes your diamond league final 2023 jisme neera chopra has come second the guy who's come first is jacob from czech republic this is third title and the location for the final was eugene us there were a lot of record breaking moments so faith kipigan uh, she's from kenya she sort of broke the record uh, in 1500 meter 5000 meter and 1 mile and um, yeah so uh, gudak sega uh, sige or uh, ethiopia se hai she broke faith's record in the 5000 mile right so basically um yeah then is lamecha girma ethiopia he uh, broke a world record in the 3000 meter steeple chase jacob from norway in 2000 meter and arman duplantis ye insaan apna hi record break karta rehta hai pole vault mein Diamond League inaugural season was 2010. Full sponsorship name is uh, Wanda Diamond League, and 2022 may they excluded Russia and Belarus because of the Russia-Ukraine war. Then we go on to the World Champion 2023. Um, Antim Pangal um, got the bronze medal in wrestling. So this took place in Belgrade in Serbia, right? And uh, she performed really well. and so she's also earned a 53 kg quota for the paris olympics she's now qualified for that right she's become only the sixth indian woman to win the bronze medal at the world's championship right and she won uh, over sweden's emma jonna theek hai apart from that um, yeah this is the only medal that india has won so far and of course you know that we've been banned by the united world wrestling because of the fact that we have not held the uh, elections of wrestling federation of india on time so indians are competing under the uww which is the united world wrestling flag theek hai apart from that geeta fogart babita fogart uh, pooja dhanda vinesh fogart anshu malik they all won medals previously for india before right Uh, United World Wrestling. It was made in 1912. The president is Nenad Lalovich, and Lausanne, Switzerland, may headquarter hai. Baki Wrestling Federation of India, 1967 headquarter is New Delhi. Then we talk about the FIBA World Cup, um, where Germany won. Right. So it was the 19th tournament, ठीक है, of men's national basketball team. it was hosted by multiple nations for the first time in its history which is basically philippines japan indonesia first time in the tournament uh, that the host nation did not qualify which is indonesia so philippines and japan qualified but the same courtesy was not given to indonesia uh, germany went undefeated uh, this is great it was their first appearance at the world cup hai na were i mean they won it for the first time this is the first time that they won this particular tournament right and uh, apart from that for serbia it was the second appearance um what else do we have to keep in mind 
uh, Canada also went out to win the bronze medal. This is its first medal in the World Cup history after defeating United States. सबसे पहली बार अपियरेंस और किन्होंने दिया है लातविया जॉर्जिया केपवर्ड एंड साउथ सुडान राइट दिस ऑल्सो सेट अ रिकॉर्ड फॉर द मोस्ट अटेंडेड वर्ल्ड कप गेम एवर इन हिस्ट्री डोंट हैव टू लर्न हाउ मेनी स्पेक्टेटर्स बट यू शुड नो तो फर्स्ट टाइम क्या क्या हुआ है फर्स्ट टाइम मल्टीपल नेशंस में हुआ है विच इज़ फिलिपींस जापान एंड इंडोनेशिया पहली बार होस्ट कंट्री एज नॉट क्वालिफाइड विच इज़ इंडोनेशिया जर्मनी हैज़ वन फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम right uh, canada has got a medal for the first time and uh, record for most attended world cup in this particular tournament has happened for the first time fine and apart from that most valuable player uh, defending champion you don't really have to know who won last time so more than that you should know the most valuable player this is denis german right and uh, luka from slovenia Now let's go ahead. The next one is the Durin Cup. The Durin Cup is also called Indian Oil Durin Cup because uh, of the sponsorship ties. It is the oldest football tournament in Asia, right? And it is the second edition since it was supported by the Asian Football Confederation. पहली बार eighteen eighty eight में खेला गया था, ठीक है? And um, the tournament is hosted by durand football tournament in cooperation with the all india football federation eastern command of indian armed forces government of west bengal also supported by government of assam venue was kolkata and assam right guwahati and kokrajhar is uh, in assam and uh, pichli bar bangalore was the one who were the defending champions and uh, this time around it has been won by mohan bagan super giant in fact Mohan Bagan Super Giant are the most successful team. Also, they won seventeen times, and uh, the runner-up was um, their arch rivals East Bengal. Okay, and it is for the first time that there was foreign uh, participation. Also, so um, you know, so from India, Nepal, and Bangladesh. So India, so hey, yeah, Nepal and Bangladesh. Se bhi logo ne participate kiya tha. So first time in twenty seven years that a foreign team participated in the tournament. Golden glove went to Vishal Kerth, golden boot to David, and golden ball to Sekar, Nand Kumar Sekar. ठीक है बाकी top goal scorers की बात करें तो ये दोनों के दोनों हैं six goals each. Let's go ahead. The next one is the fifth national wheelchair rugby championship. This was the fifth edition. It was hosted in Balwadi in Pune. right maharashtra got the title of the champion over karnataka it has been organized by the indian rugby football union um it has become the largest national wheelchair event ever hosted by rugby india right and uh, japan wheelchair rugby federation also hosted a day long wheelchair rugby workshop earlier baki president of the indian rugby football union is rahul bos so these are certain appointments again these are one liners jaya verma first woman ceo of railway board vasudha gupta principal director general of akashvani news manish desai principal director of pib press information bureau k n shant kumar of press uh, trust of india chairman r madhavan is the head of film and television institute of india rahul navin is the enforcement directorate um, He is the di director of ED. Major Dr. Payal Chabra, first woman to join Paris Special Forces in India. Pramila Malik, first woman speaker of Odisha Legislative Assembly. Tharman, the Singapore presidential election. Right. Uh, Vanuatu, may uh, PM Sato Kilman has been appointed. Then a scientist who voiced the countdown of Chandrayaan three has passed away. Valaramathi. Val Valaramathi. you have to learn it creator of powerpoint has passed away dennis austin i have not included ms swami nathan because we've done that in class then is a uh, 53rd dada saheb phalke award wahida rehman is the one who has won it is the highest award in the field of cinema uh, it is given by the ministry of information broadcasting first presented in 1969 first recipient was devika rani फादर ऑफ इंडियन सिनेमा के नाम पे है ये दादा साहेब फालके जिन्होंने इंडिया की फर्स्ट फुल लेंथ फीचर फिल्म बनाई थी राजा हरीश चंद्र 
देन बच्चे आ जाता है आपका शांति स्वरूप भटनागर अवार्ड ऑफ 2022 ये किस फील्ड में मिलता है साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी कौन देता है काउंसिल ऑफ साइंटिफिक एंड इंडस्ट्रियल रिसर्च इट इज नेम्ड आफ्टर द फाउंडर डायरेक्टर ऑफ सी एस आई आर ठीक है इट वॉज फर्स्ट अवॉर्डेड इन नाइनटीन ठीक है इट इज अवॉर्डेड टू एन इंडियन सिटीजन हु इज एंगेज इन द फील्ड ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक डिक्लेयर एवरी ईयर ऑन द ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर सी एस आई आर का फाउंडेशन डे है ये फोर्टी फाइव ईयर्स तक का होना चाहिए इंसान एंड आई टेल यू वाई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट राइट ऑल द ट्वेल्व विनर्स फॉर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू आर मैन जस्ट लाइक इट वॉज इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन इन फैक्ट सिंस द बिगिनिंग आउट ऑफ फाइव नाइनटी टू अवार्ड ओनली ट्वेंटी हैव बिन गिवन टू वेमेन द फर्स्ट वुमेन टू रिसीव इट वॉज आसिमा चैटर्जी इन नाइनटीन and the recent one was 2020 bushra atik and jyotimai dash please learn their names director general is uh, kalai selvi i'll tell you why because there was an entire article that spoke about the fact that women have not been given a lot of awards here pehli baat to women scientists who have uh, headed some of the csir labs so dr n kalai selvi the current director general Suman Kumar Mishra, she is in Kolkata Central Glass and Ceramic Research Institute. Shri Devi Anupurna Singh, she is for the Food Technology Research Institute in Mysore. Ranjan Agarwal, this is she is for Communication and Policy in New Delhi. Shri Devi Jade is for uh, the Fourth Paradigm Institute in Bangalore. Central Drug Research Institute in Lucknow is Radha Rangarajan. and ananda wali is a structural engineering research center in chennai apart from that uh, the the indian express article also spoke about certain top women in science so indian Insti- indian statistical institute kolkata me ye professor hai neena gupta right and um, So ten years ago, she solved a complex geometrical problem called Zariski cancellation that had remained unresolved for a, for around seventy years. Vidita Vaidya, she is a professor at TIFR, right? And uh, she is known for her research into the role of serotonin, um, which is basically a chemical that transmits signals between neurons in the brain. She investigates phenomena such as mood disorder, anxiety, depression. This is there is Aditi Sen, Harish, um, so Harish Chandra Research Institute, Prayagraj. Me, he works. She is a she is a professor of quantum information and computation. Uh, the only woman so far to be selected for the Shanti Swaroop Bhatnaga Prize for Physical Sciences, by the way. Then is Shubha Tole. Uh, she is a neuroscientist, right? She is uh, investigated into the development evolution of mammalian brain. She is the winner of Infosys Prize for Life Sciences, Shanti Swaroop Award भी मिला है इनको, ठीक है, amongst many other. Then there is Sunita Saravagi. She is in IIT Bombay. She is a computer scientist. There is Rama Govind Rajan. She is a senior professor, International Center for Theoretical Sciences, TFIR Bangalore में, ठीक है. There is Prerna Sharma, Indian Institute of Sciences, Bangalore में. She is an associate professor. बिहेवियर ऑफ फ्लूड्स पढ़ती हैं उर्बासी सिन्हा रमन रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट बेंगलुरु राइट शी शी ऑल्सो गॉट अ होमी बाबा फेलोशिप फ्रॉम 2017 थाउजेंड टू नाइनटीन सुमाती राव इंटरनेशनल सेंटर फॉर थियोरेटिकल साइंसिस में है देर इज सोमिया स्वामीनाथन राइट एम एस स्वामीनाथन रिसर्च फाउंडेशन फाइन देन इज बूशरा अतीक दिस इज शी इज इन आई कानपुर there is gagandeep kang um, one of the most well known in fact um, she has worked on preventing gra- gastrointestinal infection in children she is the first woman from india to be elected for a fellow of the royal society right she works with the bill melinda gates foundation there is sangamitra bandopadhyay indian institute indian statistical institute kolkata she is currently the director there is annapurna uh, annapurni subramaniam currently the director of indian institute of astrophysics bangalore uma ramakrishnan national center for biological sciences so there are so many of them right so that's the whole point of the article ki bhai itni sari hai to tumko mahilaon ko dene se problem kya hai ye award right so some also say 
नहीं नहीं यू नो फोर्टी फाइव ईयर्स है विमेन सॉर्ट ऑफ वर्क ऑन देयर करियर वे बी ऑन दैट बिकॉज यू नो इन द इनिशियल ईयर्स दे आर बिजी टेकिंग केयर ऑफ दर फैमिलीज माइट बी ट्रू माइट नॉट बी ट्रू आई डोंट नो बट दीज आर द वेमेन हु आर डूइंग वेरी वेल इन द फील्ड ऑफ साइंस दर इज बीनीता गाउडा इन आईसर भोपाल राइट एंड शी इन्वेस्टिगेट्स द एवोल्यूशनरी क्वेश्चन इन प्लांट मॉर्फोलॉजी तो लर्न कर लो इनका नाम यार क्योंकि न्यूज़पेपर में काफ़ी ज़्यादा इसके बारे में बात हो रही है स्टेम वाली जो फील्ड है उसमें विमेन की रिप्रेजेंटेशन एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट बाकी रेमन मक्सेसी अवार्ड कितनी बार किया है कोरवी रक्षन बांग्लादेश हैज गॉट इट फॉर इंक्लूसिव एजुकेशन यूजीनियो लेमोस टेमोरलेस से जो है ही इज़ वर्क ऑन हाउ यंगस्टर्स व्यू नेचर एंड सराउंडिंग्स मेरियम कॉरनल from philippines um, non violent strategy in peace building dr ravi kanan a devotion towards medical profession this is named after the seventh president raymond maxese first winner from india was vinoba bhave only rbi governor to receive as a cd deshmukh ms swami nathan also received it bachche sangeet natak academy award also called the academy puraskar it is given by in India's National Academy of Music, Dance and Drama. It was first instituted in 1952. So, um, very interesting. Uh, they have for the first time announced a special one-time award commemorating 75 years of India's independence to 84 artists who are above the age of 75 and have not been accorded with any honor yet, which is brilliant. 84 artists above the age of 75 years have been given this award. Then is Swati Nayak has been given the Norman Borlaug Award, which is conferred by the Coromandel uh, International Institute, created in nineteen seventy two to honor uh, Norman Borlaug, obviously. Then there is Rahul Mishra. I don't know how to pronounce it, guys, but it is the highest recognition in France in the field of art and culture. Doctor Swami Nathan Award, both ends. So there is this one that has been given to uh, P. V. Satya Narayan. then there is one for environmental protection that has been uh, given to vijay kumar and one for leadership in agriculture that has been given to surendra sehgal and sehgal foundation all in this year all these three are in this year there is world innovation award at brics has been given to shanta thotam for her contribution to sdg 4 which is basically quality education theek hai it is organized by world organization which is an international ngo with special consultative status given uh, by un ecosoc and this was at the first brics innovation forum which was hosted at moscow uh then the dr vg patel memorial award was given to satyajit majumdar which is given by tata institute of social sciences uh for the development of entrepreneurship especially in the social sector then pravina anjana has become miss international india 2023 abhi isme aur main kya batau digital quality index of india survey india ka rank is 52 out of 121 countries uh, top is france asia ka agar baat kare to top is singapore india asia mein 13th hai crypto adoption index mein india first hai out of 154 countries these are the critical parameters i don't think you have to learn it but do learn that four hai na rank 2 is nigeria global innovation index india is 40 right um, and um, yeah one second it's here so india is 40 out of 132 countries released by wipo rank 1 is switzerland wipo was made in 1967 and uh, in geneva switzerland darren tang is the head world talent ranking jo hai india ka hai 56 out of 64 please take a screenshot learn it all up right released by international institute for management development rank 1 is switzerland so talent mein bhi rank 1 is switzerland talented bhi wohi hai innovation bhi unhi ka hai theek hai okay so uh, world talent ranking mein kehte hai ki hamara jo educational system in terms of accessibility is really bad then is state of the rhino report of 2023 this is published by international rhino foundation focus is on five surviving rhino species in africa and asia the five species are white rhino which is decreasing iucn status is near threatened the second one is greater one horn rhino it is increasing iucn status is vulnerable black rhino also increasing status is critically endangered javan rhino javan rhino stable hai 
IUCN is critically endangered. So Matra Rhino decreasing, IUCN is critically endangered. So Panch may say jo teen hai wo critically endangered hai, ek vulnerable hai, aur ek near threatened hai. Baki World Rhino Day is celebrated on the 22nd of September because of this female called Lisa Jane Campbell. Uh, it was first announced by the World Wildlife Fund. Protected areas in India, UP mein Dhudbar Tiger Reserve, West Bengal mein Jaldapara Na National Park, Gorumara National Park, Assam mein Pabitura Wildlife Sanctuary, Orang National Park, Kaziranga National Park, jahan pe maximum rhinos hain, and also Manus National Park, right? Then is conservation efforts by India. There is a national rhino conservation strategy. There is an India Rhino Vision 2020. There, is, there was a New Delhi Declaration on Asian Rhinos, which was in 2019, which was signed by five rhino range countries, which are India, Bhutan, Nepal, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Baki synthetic athletic tracks banai hai Himachal Pradesh mein. Inaugurate kiya hai Anurag Singh Thakur ne. It is at an altitude of 8,000 feet. 20th anniversary of vibrant Gujarat Global Summit has been, uh, you know, celebrated. This is under the visionary leadership of the then Chief Minister, Sri Narendra Modi. And it was in the science city in Ahmedabad. Today, it is not hai. Okay. Then is first Gorilla Glass plant, a US-based company, hai, Corning. And they have made their manufacturing facility in Telangana. Underground Transformer Banaya Bangalore Mein. This is the first in India to preserve the aesthetic appeal of India's garden city, which is Bangalore. Turmeric ki baat humne kal ki hai. Turmeric conference bhi hui thi Mumbai mein. First polythene waste bank has been created in Uttarakhand. First portable disaster hospital in India has been created. Uh, wherein, you know, it can be airlifted, it can be transferred, accessibility increases. This is under the project Bhisham, uh, which has been introduced by Narendra Modi. Full form is Bharat Health Initiative for Sahyog, Hit and Maitri. Okay? Or is it, yeah, so it has blood test equipment, x-ray, this and that. First symposium was uh, done on farmers' right in New Delhi. It was inaugurated by President Draupadi Murmu. Right, wherein um, she said that despite occupying only 2.4% of the world's land area, the country is home to 7 to 8% of all recorded plant and animal species. Baki Haikun Taiwan. Taiwan has made its own domestically made submarine called Haikun. That is important. Yudh Abhyas was held in Alaska, 19th edition, India, US, Indian Army and the US Army. Operation Sajak was a comprehensive drill that was conducted by the Indian Coast Guard. And that is just about it. Thank you very much. I will see you again with another month. Uh, kindly keep revising. Bye.